Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Electric Underground podcast slash videocast. Joining me today is Octane, a favorite of Shmup Slam 5 commentary. We're all really enjoying his commentary, especially in the IRL room. We're all laugh. I heard people laughing. I heard people being like, oh, I like this guy. So uh, <laughs> a fan favorite. I I've requested to bring on the podcast. So I thought, yeah, that'd be perfect. So welcome to the show, my dude. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I, I legit can't believe I am on the Electric Underground's um, the, the channel. 10K subscribers, mm-hmm. the the vanguard of, of the shmup revolution. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, you're you're e-famous now. That's all it takes is one appearance on the show and, you know, the, the checks start flowing, the money starts coming through, sponsorships, you start uh, <laughs> shilling VPNs, you know, all that can happen. <laughs> Just one episode of the podcast. Okay. We will get the NFT train rolling <laughs> yes, shortly NFTs. thereafter this. NFTs, VPNs, what else? Um, those, those headphones and Ridge wallets, <laughs> all of it, you know. Ridge wallets, wow. <laughs> you get it all. But Ridge yeah, I, wallets. They I just, thought it'd just be great to bring you on and just get right into your sort of... Do you have any experience with doing commentary and commentating over games or other types of events? Because... You do come across as like really fun, charismatic, polished, or you just feel like maybe you're a bit of a natural. Yeah, I, I get. I guess for that, I'm gonna have to go with natural. Only in so far <laughs> that I haven't commentated anything like pre shmups. Um, you know, I, I've done like my own. Like I tried to do some like Twitch streaming and some commentary of my own stuff. But um, yeah, no, I never really. It, it never really dawned on me so much. I mean, I, I'm just a goofball in general, so it's probably just I like to talk and it and it, and it worked out. But I think, yes. like, you know, people... But you sound I think good on the microphone, me, like, too, though. It's not only hmm, that, you know, are, that's you're fun and you have fun things to say, but it sounds like you and the microphone, you, like, have a... You know what I mean? I have a sense for making yourself work on the microphone, which I had to learn. That was not natural for me at all. I had to learn that over the course of a few years. So you seem really polished, and so I wanted to kind of see what maybe your background in commentary might have been. Yeah, well, you know what? I appreciate that, but I think you you did hit on something, which is you know, gr- growing up in in college and such. I would uh, I was like a uh, I actually helped run a couple times the one of the local open mics at a coffee shop. Ah, so we're I, getting I do, to the I, bottom I know, of it now. <laughs> I know a little bit about sound. I, I'm not I, like I never ran sound because I was oh, live sound with mics. It's the worst. And I just <laughs> yes. it's like double it feedback. Was, uh, going. Oh, my God. Feedback everywhere. And it's, <laughs> oh, I can't hear myself in the monitors. And it's like, oh, fuck you. If I turn the monitors up, you're going to go. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, I, I did like, you know, I'd done like some open mics and I recorded a little bit of music and stuff like that. So I have a little bit of sense of sound, but as far as like talking, you know, spoken word or podcasting, I've never done either of those things. I've always wanted to get into like a real podcast booth. You ever see one with like real mics and rooms yes. that don't the whole, make huge sounds? The whole setup I, and everything. Yeah, do. definitely. Love well, I'm not there that, myself other ne- than, you know, I tried to slowly morph the <laughs> shmup shed into the shmup studio. I don't, can't think it, I don't think it's quite there yet, but that would be cool. You know, you get noise, noise proof and you get the really nice microphones and get all cozy and all that sort of stuff a fire in the background or whatever mm-hmm. it takes <laughs> a fire <laughs> i do have um i wonder if they'll be able to see this um it's a, behind my head no it's actually it's actually not you can barely see it there's a blue mic right here and behind it is like a it's like a fake audio booth it's like a semicircle with like oh, some acoustic that's material very that cool. I got from a friend, but I don't want to use it because it would literally cover my entire head. So it's pretty much <laughs> worthless. Yeah, it's like this amazing piece of acoustic equipment that I'll probably never use for streaming or anything with video because it will literally—I would look like a black box. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like your theme, though. It could be like your. your you just like get- put a—it's like Dead Mouse. You just put like a schmuck yes. sticker on the back of it and just that's it. <laughs> yes. Well, You're so smart. I need, well, to, I need to have this conversation earlier. <laughs> yes, I know. I could help you with all of these questions. So when you were doing your Twitch channel, what were you streaming? What were you commentating? Shmups or other things? Oh, no. I mean, I was... I mean, I, I, I for a little bit, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do, like, you know, like Forza videos because I ended up getting, like, a racing chair and, oh, like, some cool. racing pedals. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to, like, do that. And, but, like, it was... It was just, I mean, I did it for like a weekend or a couple of things and I was like, ah, I'm good. There's, I don't know what to do with this or why I'm <laughs> yeah. doing this. It just kind of was cool to watch myself back more than anything. But then now, you know, when I joined, you know, the Junkie Discord, it was, you know, um, 
it was actually, I think it was Hauser. Hauser was like, dude, just stream shmups. It doesn't matter. Like, just, just, even if you suck, just stream shmups because we want to get the word out and we want people to see people playing them and we'll, also people can help you. And then, then, you know, then it turned into like a, a, a like a, just a smart thing to do, which is like when you stream a shmup, almost any shmup, like someone will show up and be like, yeah, do you know on uh, Boss 2, you just sit there on the yes. right? Yes, uh, <laughs> you get coaching and stuff. You. That's really nice. Yeah. That really helped me with Ketsui, so, too. Uh, Juju Kenobi would come in and coach me a bit. And, and Moglar sometimes, which is funny. <laughs> Moglar comes in gives me top-level strats when I'm practicing Ketsui and stuff. And he's like, why aren't you scoring? Those are real dudes. <laughs> yeah, those are hardcore dudes. Yeah, yes, exactly. Are. So the world, the shmuposphere is small enough that it makes it exciting to be even just a brand new streamer. I mean, I, I would say to anyone even listening to this, if you're nervous or if you just want to just like play shmups a little bit more socially and you have a decent computer just like create a switch account go to s you know make your category stg shmups and and just and, and your audio is going to be all fucked your video is going to not show up and the frame rate is going to be all messed up but someone will join and say hey let me help you like i can i can help you with this and then before you know it you'll be you know playing shmups socially yeah and i've always really cool. said that a great way to get yourself further into the genre is actually to stream it like if you're a newer player and you're having trouble oh, yeah. and stuff streaming is a great way to get more acquainted with the genre because you have not only a social motivation for doing it but also like you said you get real-time feedback that you wouldn't get otherwise which can really help you in a lot of ways so yeah i definitely recommend even newer players picking up the the obs or whatever you need to do to do some streaming so, speaking of joining Shmup Junkies Discord and getting into the genre, how exactly did that come about? When did you get into Shmups and what was sort of the entrance down the rabbit hole? Yeah, it's actually really interesting, or at least it's interesting to me now looking back. So, I would say maybe November um, 2020? Yeah, yeah, November 2020 was when I started playing a game that no one's heard of zero ranger i'm sure you know you probably haven't mm. heard of it. it's a niche indie small <laughs> time two people made a game i mean just finish i'm not at that familiar pretty with sure. the game but it sounds a little familiar you know like i think yeah, i heard it, it in passing a, a time or two mm -hmm. i don't even remember <laughs> mark how i got that game i don't remember <laughs> whose list it came up on somebody said something about the game yeah and i was like oh this looks neat like it's I think, probably the you know, um, donkey that's probably where you heard of it was on donkey's channel um, no, this is pre. It's gotta be pre Donkey. Didn't Donkey just do his recently? When was Donkey's? When it came Zero out. Thing? When that it came out, he's re like Zero Rangers cool. Was it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Isn't that I funny too? That, that like Donkey's great. The entire shmup world could all make a bunch of noise about the game, and Donkey just needs to mention it for five minutes in a video, and it does like eight bajillion times more, like, good for the game than anything any of us could do, which is. Kind of sad, but also kind it was of funny. on Jer it was on Jeremy Parrish's list. Do you know who Jeremy Parrish is? I don't, but I'm not super so in touch with like you're not into the. Yeah. Well, I'm not in touch. It's not that I'm not into it. It's just I'm literally like a little bit old man sometimes, where I think like mm -hmm. I'm out of date on some of the newer like video game YouTubers and stuff. I'm like, I'm still thinking... no, he's not a no. He's oh, okay, he's an old he? school. He's probably older than you. He he runs a um he runs a site and podcast called Retronauts. They explore oh, video gaming history. Familiar. It's, that sounds familiar. It's almost yeah. all it's almost all retro games. And yes, he yeah. put it on like his game of the year list. And he only did like two it's like he hasn't even done a game of the year list the last two or three years. So I don't even know what possessed him, but he was like, I'm gonna do a game of the year list. And then <laughs> yeah. like Zero Ranger was on, and I was like, What? But anyways, I I played that game. I so what happened was I actually um got an arcade one up cabinet that I then modded with a laptop and I was playing a lot of fighting games and stuff on it. Nice. And I ended up, yeah, and I ended up, like, getting Zero Ranger, starting to play it, and, you know, at this point, I didn't know that, I didn't know the, what the what the words 1cc meant, or that that was even a thing. Like, right, Legit, right. dead serious. What happened was, I got stuck on 1-4. I was think, like... What part of the stage? Just the stage on itself? One four. The whole stage. The okay. whole stage. I was stuck on 1-4. Like... And, and I didn't think that I would never start back at 1-1. I would start, because so for those that don't know Zero Ranger, it is a game, so it's, a, it's an indie shmup, right? But it lets you start off wherever you left off, right? You don't have to go back and start system. a new run every time. Yeah. It, well, not only a continue system, you can start your run 
in one four. Like you, you, mm-hmm. you start your run and you have all your continues. So it's not like you start at one one and then you continue. When you start at one four or two one or two two, um, it is technically a two loop game. You, you just, it's like a regular video game, right? You've beaten that stage. Yes. There's really no, re- it's like Devil May Cry, let's say. You know, yep. you play Devil May Cry, you beat Mission 1. You can go back and play Mission 1 again if you want. But really, you're just going to, you know, you're going to pick up the game. You're going to start off at Mission 2. That's what I was doing. Yeah. You know, maybe you have some yellow orbs from Mission 1. system, that's, by the way. Then. Yeah, you got you got your yellow orbs. Those are your continue systems, yeah. right? In Devil May Cry. So then you don't have to replay it. But I was at 1-4. I was starting at 1-4. I had a full set of eight continues marked. So it's like, mm-hmm. now I look back and go like, dude, that's a joke. Like, that's <laughs> no problem at all. Like, you know? Um, well, I remember when I played Dodonpachi DOJ for the first time, I thought 1-3 was impossible. I thought it was literally like, oh, this is like trolling. The game is trolling me. No one can actually beat the stage. And that's actually how I actually found Jamer's channel. Because I was convinced no one can beat this game. It's it's impossible. You know, that's. I didn't even know about second right. loop. It was one three. <laughs> I was thinking that about. Yeah. Well, that's what I did, right? I went to YouTube because I was like, "How are people beating this stage? Literally mm-hmm. one four. Yeah. No idea. And I go there and I see one CC, two all, this and that. You know, mm-hmm. all this stuff. I saw Jamers. I saw a couple other videos. Um, and I just kind of because I didn't want to spoil the game for myself. I just kind of forwarded to one four, saw a little bit. And the problem was, I was like. I don't see anything. I just see people not getting hit by bullets. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like, oh, just don't get hit. <laughs> like, I didn't see, like, some magic strat. Like, I didn't, you know, in Zero Ranger, I didn't see, like, oh, here's a safe spot. Or it, 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 The game doesn't really have a lot of stuff like that, to my knowledge, where it's, like, there's maybe a couple boss strats where you really, like, I think more so in the in, in Stage 2 than anything. But in 1-4, it's literally, like, just don't get hit. So then I was yeah. like, oh, well, fuck. <laughs> but I beat 1-4. I beat 2-1. I went through the entire game. I got hit by the thing at the end. I won't spoil it for those that haven't played it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did it again, and eventually I beat Zero Ranger with the TLB. You know, not not a one CC, not even a two CC, not even an eight CC. I started at two four, and I used all eight of my continues. Well, three or four of them, and then I used the <laughs> other four for the for the last boss, and. I was so I felt so accomplished. I, that feeling of like just beating that game to me, it was like different yeah. than Dark Souls, different than Sekiro, different than everything. It just felt really different. Absolutely. And so then I started to be like, I where are th- there are games like this? I've I've played them in arcades and on Mame and stuff. So what do I what do I need to do to get more of this? So then you know. Well, that's a great introduction fast- to the genre. Absolutely, Zero Ranger. I think so. And I think it was made yeah, for it's that an in a lot of ways, one. like. Zero Ranger's continue system is probably one of the best, if not the best, continue systems in shmups ever. Because it allows you, like a new player like yourself, to continue in the game and feel accomplished. But it doesn't beat you down too hard, nor does it hold your hand too much. Because the problem with, like, cave ports, for example, is you can just credit spam your way through. And you don't feel accomplished at all. But if if you're like, okay, I'm not going to credit spam... Then it's really hard because then you just need to one CC it, right? But Zero Ranger gives you that sort of middle path where the game is acknowledging, okay, you can't one CC it, but I'm not going to let you credit spam either because it resets you back to checkpoints and stuff. So you're going to have to sort of learn what to do, and it's a great continue system, I think. So that's really cool. You're, it you're right. Get you I didn't into even the think genre. about that. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I, I think, and I think in a lot of ways, like. The thing about Zero Ranger that's kind of unique from most other shmups too is that I was like playing around too. Like I would get to a stage and I would go, well, let me try B ship with missiles or with drill. Okay, well, let me try C ship with sword. Let me try it. Like, and I would like play around a lot. Like I would experiment a lot instead of just like, oh, well, this is my ship and I'm going to go back to 1 1. Like, 1 right. 1 was dead. Like, I didn't know. I never wanted to see 1 1 again. I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't need to. Of course, yeah. the, the game, the game sometimes, the game kind of forces you to do that but let's not get into that. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it was interesting. And then, so, you know, after that, it was kind of like, I saw your channel, I saw your, like, tutorials, I saw, you know, um, Shmup Junkies tutorials. I joined both, I, I think I joined his Discord first, I found the link first, then I joined the Rev Discord and a couple other Discords. I, I think actually those two. And then Shmup Junkie at the time, this is now in January of 2021. Yes, yes. January of 2021. He was having a Raging Blasters caravan competition. I, I joined that. basically yeah. right into that caravan competition. And I was like, hey, I'm new. Um, 
I had just beaten, I had just one CC Blue Revolver Normal. And oh, I had nice. done that using your tutorial, using Shmup Junkie's tutorial. I like, I listened to both your tutorial videos and I was like, okay, Blue Revolver, I can do this. And I think it was really hot at that time. Like you were talking about a lot. A lot of people were talking about yes. Blue Revolver. Yes, and it, the, it was, but that was around the time Danbo came on the channel and did his uh, that's podcast, exactly right. I think. Yeah. And I was like, this game looks cool. It's got cool style. It had so many extras too. Like it just felt like a round, like a well-rounded package, like similar to Zero Ranger where yeah, I, I feel it like I always consider them sort of sibling so games, hard. even though they don't have any yeah. real connection to each other, but I always consider them that. Nah. So I, I, that would be my natural next recommendation is like, oh, I love Zero Ranger. What's the next game? I'd be like, all right, play Blue Revolver now because <laughs> you'll get Which a similar because then, feel. Yeah, which I think is interesting because um, so, you know, Crimson Clover, Novice was my first 1cc, and then Blue Revolver Normal was my second 1cc. And na j only now, a year and almost three months later, only now am I starting to go back to Zero Ranger and say, mm, maybe I should start working mm. on this too all. Because yes, like, yes, you know, you, you would think the natural progression, well, I, I hear you, but like the natural progression should be like, oh, I love Zero Ranger. I want to do a one all, but I, I never felt that way because the game is just was just like, it was it just it was such a it was such a joy for me that I didn't want to like feel like maybe I if I couldn't two all it that maybe I didn't like the game anymore. I felt like mm -hmm. underqualified to talk about the game and stuff like that. Yes. So I was just like, I'm gonna come back to this because it just felt so it felt so hard. I mean, and just think about like. Oh, when did I? How did I beat this game? Oh, I went to two four, used all eight continues. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you want me to start at one one? Like, eh. so. But that started me on the one CC train. It was it was Crimson Clover novice, and it was um, actually the Crimson Clover novice. My first one CC ever is very fascinating story because I was in bed, slightly tipsy off of bourbon, and I was using a flip grip oh, with nice. Joy Cons. <laughs> so you did it on the Switch. It, Oh yeah, I did it on the Switch, and well, but that's the thing. But at the time, I didn't know how to record a Switch, so then I had to redo the One CC on PC. So I did it on my like main cab or like my laptop cabinet or whatever you want to call it, and I redid the One CC on the laptop cabinet, and then I took that replay file to my main computer, ran the replay through OBS, and then put that on YouTube. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it was like nice. my second 1cc. But anyways, those are the three games that really got me in. And then after that, it's just been like 1cc chasing, like trying to find the right ramp in, which has been, it's really kind of difficult, I would say, to find the ramp into like going from novice modes to something like clearing Dodonpachi, which I did eventually do through a lot of pain, at least to me, a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. It took me about three months hours to get least. my first one all in Dodonpachi, I think. S Yes, I would say that or more. I had to take big breaks because I was getting so frustrated, you know, with like missing in early stages or like stage three, you know, just like mm -hmm. losing seven bombs on stage three and just like, I can't clear it now. I, I need <laughs> right. all of those. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's really cool. And that's a really nice set of shmups to get into the genre, I would say, you know, coming in through Zero Ranger. That's a game I've always hoped would be a real crossover game for players. And then Blue Revolver, that's also a very strong crossover game. And then, of course, Crimson Clover, which is one of the best shmups ever made, and it's got so many features, and it seems to be really connecting with a lot of new players. It's really cool, because a few years ago, it seemed like whenever I interviewed newer people, and I asked, how'd you mm -hmm. get into the genre? 90% of them were through the genre of Via Toho, like 90%. Everyone I could think of okay. back in the day when I Unsurprising. like newer players. Interesting, actually. Because yeah. Toho at the time was like the strongest crossover title, bar none. There was nothing that crossed over nearly as well. But now I'm getting a lot of people saying Crimson Clover and stuff like Zero Ranger. So I'm really excited to see these games. They're, they seem to be trickling their way through to the larger gaming population slowly but steadily. I think it's in no small part to you and others like who just repeatedly talk about the games because I think you know again I didn't I you know it's funny I had I, when I went to go play Crimson Clover I already had it in my in my library of Steam because I got it on some stale, sale because I just thought it looked cool yes like visually for $1 it was like, and 30 this is cents. so weird <laughs> yeah, yeah for exactly for like a third of a cup of fucking coffee um, yes. for like not even the tax on a on a cup of coffee in Chicago like and I was like 
and I looked at my achievements and it was like I had beaten the I had beaten the game with all three ships, i.e. credit fed the game with yeah. all three ships, probably in 60 minutes or less, <laughs> you yes. know, or like around that time. And I went, cool game. And then I put it <laughs> yep, down. Yep, right? yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah. Be, you know, because I, who considers themselves? That's why those continue not... systems, I think they need to go. Those, those uh, credit feed continue systems, they need to go I the way of the dodo. Yeah. But, but who, but who like, who like comes into a game ever? Like, you know, it, it's something that just bothers me because it's like, I never, even as a kid when games were hard, I would never pick easy on the main menu. Like I would just lo- like I would rather lose and just be stuck than pick easy on the main menu because I just felt like okay, that's not really for me. That's for like children or something like that, right? It's yes, like, yes, you know, absolutely. You know, it's like that's like for your mom or something like or your sis- you know, sister or brother who like just want to push buttons and have the game win itself. And so Yeah, exactly. Like like for, for I never Katsui, thought, Destiny, I never even thought my my yeah. five year old son. Well, his introduction to shmups was super easy mode. <laughs> he was playing super easy mode. I was cool. like, this is the mode. Okay, now I get why super easy mode exists. It's the mode for children. Like yeah. this is awesome. But like for for never... like adult players, it's just too easy. You know. Well, but that's the thing. So I would never pick Crimson Clover novice right as a as just a regular non shmup gamer, but. Now I tell people coming into the genre, I say, and, I, and I've tested this, Mark, with so many people at this point, Crimson Clover Novice is, to me, the first 1cc you should try to get. It's a good one. Because I, it's very well I balanced. don't think that it, mm-hmm, it's very well balanced. I don't think that it holds your hand, and I, and I don't think that the patterns look baby to you. They look crazy. Like, they yes. look wild. There's a lot of bullets on screen. I mean, to me now, I'm looking at it going, mm, yeah, no problem. But... You know, when you're first starting out, it's and it teaches you resource management and it teaches you, you know, about small hitboxes and it teaches you kind of all sorts of little things. And I think it's that I, I, you know, even like I think like Blue Revolver Normal is a bit harder to me, or at least it was for me. Yes, it's, it's um, harder than, than Crimson, Crimson Clover, Clover Novice. Novice. Absolutely. Yeah. The resourcing is a little odd, right? Because the auto bombs are a little weird and, and there's just a, a little more complexity, whereas in Crimson Clover, it's sort of like you have to learn to hit as soon as you the, the first day that i decided i am going to hit the bomb button when that meter like yes. before it gets to boost because i would just wait to boost like <laughs> yeah. the day that i decided that i was going to do that it was like the next day that i cleared so it's it's teaching you all the right things which is use your resources don't you don't have to dodge every pattern and even if something looks scary it's not that scary so I, I don't know. It's that to me is an excellent intro. I think the Toho thing is really interesting too because I had never heard of Toho coming into the genre, and I don't. Yes, yes. I still, I still think that the Toho niche is like a weird internet thing because I still don't think that like if you went to like. I a, think it's. I think it's uh, not to uh, upset the Toho fans too much, but I think it's sort no, of. No, I don't want to upset them. I just think there's a, a niche there. But I think it had its time, right? Like mm. that, it was like really big, like where. It, you know mm-hmm. how these types of things on the internet work where they have their sure. time in the sun and they're just really big and Toho had that for I, I would say about 2010, 2007 2010, through that era but these days I think it's starting to get crowded out by other things and it's still incredibly popular of course but I don't yeah, I think it's a little bit a little bit less mighty than it once was as far as bringing people in being that big crossover point because now, uh, yeah, I, I just, think now uh, it's been eclipsed by the Switch. I think the Switch has taken its place as the big crossover point for people new to the genre. Because so many people, uh, when I ask them, oh, how are you getting the genre? They're like, the Switch, the Switch, the Switch. So it's it's pretty impressive what that damn Nintendo console has pulled off. <laughs> as much as it drives me crazy at times. Yeah, I hear you. It, it It's an interesting point on crossover because it's like, where is that, you know... Because on an Xbox or a PS4, are you even gonna? Are you ever even gonna stumble upon a shmup in, yeah, the, in the store? Yeah, exactly. Like you really like. Exactly. It's like it's not even gonna present itself. Um, no. <laughs> whereas at least I feel like on the Switch, I don't know. To me, like maybe it's now it feels actually now it feels more crowded. But I think for a little yes. while there, maybe it was like they would do those highlights, right? They would be like, oh, well, why don't you play this genre today? I think I saw one of those for for shmups for a little yes, while, while, while exactly. back. Stuff like that is like really good. They do a good job of catering to like a particular genre sometimes, just depending. Yeah, um, and I think exactly I that's exactly right because I think 
if we look at Nintendo's sort of history coming into the Switch, like the Wii U was a huge flop. And so, and Wii was a <laughs> commercial success, but it was not a game library success in that you can count yeah. on like one or two hands how many great games are on the Wii, right? Even though it, it was very commercially successful, it's just not, didn't have that library. So coming into the Switch, Nintendo was really, really desperate for a lot of third party support and bringing all these old arcade shmups, you know, arcade archives and all that sort of stuff, the Psycho ports and everything, and then the indie shmups, Don Mockley Limited 3 and all that, they had a bit of a open lane there for a bit where they could really shine and bring in more play- players and people. And so, yeah, I-, I think you're right, though. As we continue forward, I think that gap is going to start to close out on the Switch, and the Switch will be more and more of just a regular PS4-ish type console. Yeah, we'll see. I, you know, another thing is I found interesting about the Switch, I don't know why this is, Marco. I don't know if this is, like, strictly limited or if this is, like, other companies doing this stuff, but the Switch turned into, like, I feel like the Switch turned on this innate um, physical release thing that I feel like in the Xbox One PS4 days, people weren't, like, collecting physical yes. release games, especially not of indie games. But then, like, Cave Story, like, I'll, I'll, I can show you guys this, actually. You know, I had never even played Cave Story. This is, I got this the day I got my Switch um, because there weren't that many games I could afford on on that day. And this was one of the few ones that I was like, oh yeah, I've heard of Cave Story. And I was like, why not? Whatever. I'm sitting here in New York. I stood in line to get my Switch. Whatever, yes, right? You, you want you and want a cartridge a, to shove in the damn thing. That's, I think yeah, that's I need the some shit huge, to put into it. Yeah, I think that's the huge uh, difference between the Switch and the PS4 and the Xbox. As much as I like the PS4 more than the Switch, I still have yeah. to give it to the Switch in terms of... Because I bought, for example, Dan, uh, Dan Makun Limited 3 on Switch, the limited edition, and I never buy limited editions. Getting me to buy a limited edition a game is not an easy task. <laughs> so Same. So I think it, like you're saying, I think part of it is because of that cartridge. Like shoving that cartridge into that yep. console feels like, oh boy. It, it gets you that this hit dumb thing. of like, it's like you're firing up the old Game Boy. You know, yeah. it feels that way. Yeah, it feels that way. And they, they're the only ones who've kept this alive, right? This concept of physical cartridges and, and they taste bad and all that stuff. And then this thing comes with this really hilarious tiny CD Mm -hmm. Um, but I saw this little seed and and I was like, wait, like, you know, I got home and I was like, what have I done? Why did I purchase cave story? (laughs) Exactly. Physical. Yes. What the fuck am I doing? What what the the hell am I doing? doing, Mark? What the fuck am I doing? (laughs) You got, you got uh, hypnotized. You got a Nintendo got the whole I think, I think they did it on purpose because this was like the day I got my switch or I swear maybe day one or two that I got my switch and I just something about it um and i think that's going to be good for shmups because people love to get limited editions shmups have a real Mm. mystique around them this real arcade like mm, piece of history around them that i think you know they have to continue to capitalize on because you know let's face it a lot of the games are a little outdated mark if i'm honest (laughs) Um, (laughs) they're cool pieces of history but um you know i think you got to do a little more yeah, it's funny. I actually had a comment on a video, the the video I did of um, Softstar, where I was comparing it to a Toplan game, and someone mentioned in the comments. Oh yeah. Sorry, commenter. I'm not trying to be pick on you or anything, but he was kind of mentioning like you shouldn't mention Toplan in the same breath as this new game because you know Toplan's so mighty and great. I'm assuming. Why not? But then I was, and I I said in the comment reply, I was like, I hate to break it to you, dude, but. This is the closest you're gonna get to a Toplan game moving forward. Toplan are not making more games. This is it. Uh, the indie, you know, these types of smaller indie releases are what gonna, the genre is gonna be moving forward. And so, and I felt like the quality of the game, like if you took a step That's, back, you're out saying of a the good nostalgia thing about it. glasses a bit. Like yeah. I would say, Soft Star. I wouldn't say it's as good as Bats again. I wouldn't say that. But I'd say like Tiger Heli. Like is Tiger Heli really better than Soft Star? <laughs> if we, if we're being honest, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I'd say Soft Star is better. But that might just be me. Well, I don't think that. Maybe you know, and I, and I don't, and I think that because we're not in arcades anymore, these aren't arcade games anymore. So you can't judge them as arcade games. You know, like Tiger mm-hmm. Heli is an arcade game. Dodonpachi is an arcade game. Um, 
even like Esprit, which came out on M2, it's an arcade game, so you're judging it a little bit differently. They're still trying to get some quarters out of you, whereas <laughs> yeah. Soft Star is coming out on Steam. You know, it's yeah. it's got like 15 ships or something insane, and they all work differently. And then it's got like ways. a bajillion and, like, modes. It's got like one trillion boat modes. It's got <laughs> cadet mode. It's got they just added training mode. Thank God, which is the only like thing I thought was missing from the main menu. Which is they, by the way, yeah, they, if you guys haven't were, seen the main menu, it's like I was wondering if they're like it. wondering like read it like this. Yeah, I was almost wondering if they're like, wait a minute, Mark's gonna review the like word got out that I was gonna review the game. Get, they're like, get the training mode in now, <laughs> hurry, because they got it in by I the time so. I reviewed. That's I'm just guessing because I never contacted them about that, but I thought it was funny yeah. as I was uh, preparing the review. I saw an update. It's like. We patched in training mode. I was like, oh, maybe they knew I was coming because <laughs> they knew I, I would go it's, on about that. You know, and it's important for a longer game, too. The longer the game, yes, the more yeah. important the training mode's going to be. And that's a long game. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, absolutely not a short game. But yeah, I, I think it's interesting. You know, you, you have Banana Bites or whoever else, um, even um, Pie, Pie Slice Productions who made uh, Is that uh, Crisis, Crisis Wing? Wing, right? Yeah. That's exactly right. Crisis Wing, that's the total plan game. Straight up. Absolutely. Total plan game. That's like, don't even, trucks, like, that's like, please don't even try. Truxton. Mr. Commenter, that's, I don't want to hear about it on this <laughs> one because that's a, to, that's a straight up Truxton game. And, and <laughs> yeah. then you have like the new Dragon Maid game, which is made by Moss, who is basically making Raiden games, like for better or worse. Now that one is, I think, different because it's tied into like, it's almost like if you think about like a Power Rangers game or a Ninja Turtles game, it's got a fan base that probably isn't coming from shmups they're not coming from dodonpachi so that game i think is a little bit more mm, gameable let's say for shmup veterans is what i'm hearing played i haven't played yet. it myself is that new is it, it coming just out, came out. Mm -hmm. okay it, no it just came out okay I, I think it might only be out on a Jap on a japan eShop, but it is in english it is in english oh, okay. so but but it's a moss game you know the caladrius blaze people yes the, yes yeah but the point is that it's that's 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 right now you know it, it, like every almost like every developer or style of game is starting to like shift into these indies like you're saying mm -hmm. you know and people are trying to like carry some of that torch forward um and it's it's going to continue that way for sure like i think it's interesting that m2 is making you know senjin ls and this other one this other, the other ls game less branch and stuff like that but i don't you know and that's great you know, or like Num Numiki, like directing GGLS three, like that's awesome. It's clear that the shmup veterans are still here to play, and they want to like still be a part of the industry. But that's not the way forward. You know, it's not going to be, it's not going to carry us through five more years of shmups. Like I don't think. <laughs> yeah, the these last guys are. There's going to be like, these guys are like, this is like their last run type of thing. You know, they're not going to be yeah. making shmups for another fifteen years. It's just not doable. Like it's crazy because shmups are such a legacy genre. We forget that. The, the people who made these games are like reti legit retired not like oh I well, want to move on 30 years ago <laughs> they're like yeah they're like actually retired so yeah. uh, you gotta and the mainstream sort of gaming sphere is not gonna be able even if they really wanted to like with uh, Platinum even if Platinum really wants to look oh, at God. that for example with Socresta oh, they couldn't not. put they couldn't put the resources of that studio behind Soul Cresta. They couldn't bring the Bayonetta team in and be like, all right, forget Bayonetta 3 or 4 or whatever we're doing. We're working on a shmup for the next year. No, you we're can tell shmups. with Soul Cresta, it was like maybe one or two members of staff or like when Head they're project. on lunch break or whatever, <laughs> making it. They were not, it was break. not like That's the funny. main power of the studio behind it. Every like Monday morning for four hours, Kamiya has to like do Soul Cresta work before he does the rest of his week. <laughs> yes, weeks exactly. Full of like platinum games, like the rest of the stuff that's happening. Yeah, I, I, yeah, and I don't, I don't know that that needs to change though, Mark. Like that, that's the thing. It's like I feel like game design and 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 the way shmups. Well, let me back up. I, I think that like. The, the smaller, digestible, $20, $15 shmups, like, that's, it's kind of like underground hip-hop to me. It's like, that stuff should continue, and it should continue to push the boundaries and do weird stuff with the genre, because it's $10, $15. You can hate the game. You can, like, buy the game, and, you know, you didn't, like, you didn't have to, like, not eat that day to buy the game, yes. and it's okay. You know, if you're going to make the... a $60 shmup, it better be amazing, right? Yeah, or that, even that, you're basically describing is, House of the Bullets there, where it's going to be... Yeah. absurdly experimental but cheap as hell so it's like all right let's see because the whole idea of house of bullets was 
that you guys I'm better, not going to be able. I'm not even going to try to put a cave style game out to you guys because that's. I'm not even there creatively. But it's also like I wanted to see what would happen if you did certain things in the genre that hadn't been done before. And so it's very mm -hmm. experimental. But like you're saying, yeah, I, I can't like charge you $60 for it because it's not going to live up to mm -hmm. that quality. It's more of a, an experimental idea. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, you know, if you wanted to make like a $60 from up, I mean, you could. It would really be content. It would like it would just be a very long content heavy game full of little things where you it would be like a 20 minute um, a, a, a tw I mean, maybe not 20 let's call it 15 like a 15 minute stage that is its own stage and stage a has its own leaderboards and scoring it's almost like mini games and then stage b or whatever is another 10 minute stage it's almost like you know and then you'd have to do like six or seven of those like natsuki chronicles but times four <laughs> or something well, like that it wasn't you just, you would have somewhere around there like 50 or somewhere in there yeah, I think I paid a good 40 bucks for it on 40, Xbox 50, One. Yeah, I'm pretty there, sure. Right? I think on Steam it's cheaper, actually, weirdly enough. I think it's cheaper on PC. That tends to happen, too, which is kind of bizarre. But, like, PC games, like, I don't know. Well, they also get It's because of the more, Steam. It's the Steam ecosystem. It might be because the Steam ecosystem. Because on console, <laughs> console games tend to hold their prices a lot better. If, for example, mm -hmm. Crimson Clover World Explosion. Um, I was very curious what they're going to do with that because on Steam, Crimson Global World Ignition got to the point where you're buying it for $1.50, $2 often. So upsetting. So but, upsetting to me, dude. But you're not... Yeah, I actually did a giveaway a few years ago and I bought like 10 copies of Crimson Clover and it was so cheap that I couldn't give away <laughs> copies because everyone had a copy of the game. I was like, all right. Yeah. So, but on the other hand, on the Switch, Nintendo is not going to be like, all right, make the game $2. That's not going to happen. So it's going to hold its value longer on consoles. So I think I think the idea, if I was giving someone advice, was ironically, if you could, I think Crimson Clover World Explosion did it right. Bring it to console first. Bring it to the Switch and PS4 first. That way you can get those console prices out and then bring it to Steam where eventually its, its prices will be pushed downward from steam sale culture and all that sort of stuff absolutely especially yeah. if you're offering any kind of physical edition because no one buys physical pc games it's not a thing mm -hmm. right so ergo you want to bring it out on console first with a physical limited edition put something cool in there like a soundtrack or something that's worthwhile getting the limited edition don't just make it fucking limited edition with cool artwork that's that makes me so frustrated but regardless it's like do something cool with that you know, make it worthwhile to pe for people to pay an extra five dollars to have a piece of plastic or whatever. Throw it out on a console, bring it out on a PC like three to four months later. And at that point, if the stick grabbers want to have their day, whatever. You know, at least there's enough copies to go around on the onset. But yeah. if you bring it out on a PC and people have like a Switch or whatever, and this next Steam sale go comes around, and it's five dollars on PC and twenty five on Switch. That's gonna be an easy decision. Exactly. That's yeah. That's exactly. I we talked about that a bit. And I'm actually glad you're bringing this topic up because I have been wanting to discuss shmup pricing for quite a while because I think it's a very hmm. interesting topic for the genre and one that seems extremely relevant right now where we're, we're hmm. in this space where now it's like, how much is a shmup really worth? Not how much, I guess, how much is it really worth and how much can you sell it for? Because shmups are one of the weirdest genres ever in terms yeah. of pricing. It is so funny because... For example, you have one demographic of players who will spend thousands of dollars on shmups, on the PCBs, <laughs> not even just PCBs though, sometimes like just really rare <laughs> console ports and stuff, you know, oh, dude. Uh, Saturn Sakura games. Sakura Fl Flamingo Archives. Sakura Flamingo Archives is the milestone game archive, which has like Chaos Field and Raddergy and all that stuff for 360. And yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like 450 right now, maybe 500 mm. bucks. A lot of those and 360 no, ports no... of cave games too, like SDOJ. Yep. And there's no eShop or whatever you want to call it, XBL version. Right. So yeah, yeah. you're right. Not even just PCBs, but just like fucking games. And Saturn games. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a lot of Saturn shmups that are hella expensive. I think Radiant Silverguns up there at this point. If you want to buy Absolutely. it on the Saturn, Radiant, yeah, Ginga Fuke Densetsu Sapphire for the PC Engine is yes, another yes. multi hundred dollar mm -hmm. game. 
I think Musha at some point was a multi hundred dollars. Oh god, yeah, Musha is, is crazy now, but like, expensive too. It's insane, but yeah. So there's that. You were saying I interrupted you, but you were saying there's that era of the, players, right? But then yeah, there's there that there's that demographic of players. Then I would say there's what I would call the active player base. So uh, like a player like myself, where I'll pay I'll pay full price for a real shmup, but at the same time, I'm not going to. You know, I might hesitate a bit if it's not really getting me to motivated to buy your game. And I'm not going to just buy all the limited releases or anything like that. But then you have mm-hmm. the probably the biggest demographic of shmup players, which are sort of the um, Steam sales hunters, where uh, a lot of people will only pick up shmups on crazy low sale and that's like how they acquire their yeah, steam yeah, shmup yeah, library yeah. it's like oh i paid one dollar for crimson clover i paid yeah. five dollars for blue revolver I mean, and look no 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 shame to those people you know it's it's like no yeah, it's, it's right. about like, the, a, it's about the a, spread yeah. of the demographics yeah. though because like what because looking at just the spread of the demographics you're releasing your shmup how the hell do you price <laughs> this thing? Like, what's going to sell? Because you'll have some people who, if you put out a $500 limited release version, they won't bat an eye and they'll buy it. And then you'll have some people where you put it out for 20 bucks, they, they'll probably buy it. And then you have a large demographic who will only buy it if you put it down to, like, the $5, $10 range, you know? So people, you I know, mean, are really so stuck I, I, here I, I, as far as where to price yeah. these games. Maybe. I, I think, like, you know, if you speak to, like, Ben Bishop, who is, you know, also known as BB, the, the developer of Operation Steel, which I do want to talk about a little bit because I just love the, I just love the game. But that, that aside, you know, I talked to him about it a little bit because I think he brought his game out. I want to say it was a $15 game. It might have been... Tw- I should... You know what? I'm going to check really quickly because I don't want to get this wrong. I think I got it for $15, but I think he... It was on sale immediately. It was, like, one of those games, mm-hmm. like, the, the first week it was on sale... And, and, you know, I talked to him about it a little bit, and I was like, you know, Space Moth is like, I think Crisis Wing is like an $8 game, right? Yep. Um, here, I'm just going to check. You guys might hear typing, um, but I'm just curious. Okay, it's $15 full price. Okay, just wanted to make sure I got that right. So it's $15 yeah, full price. I'm Blue pretty Revolver, sure I paid like Zero 12 Ranger, they're, they're in that area. They're about 20 Zero Ranger's so. 11 99 or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Oh, like shit. 10 to 15 11, range. So it's, it's dropped. Mm-hmm. It was it's always dropped. that. Yeah, yeah. It was always oh, that? Okay, I'm just stupid then. Was it Blue Revolver? One of them had to be 20, damn it. Was it Blue Revolver? I think Uh, it's Blue Revolver. Okay, Blue Revolver. If I'm not mistaken. Um, But, yeah, Zero Ranger always... The reason I remember the Zero Ranger is like $12 is because it was just the weirdest price point, so I always remember it. It's like, what a weird... Mm, Nah, 10 is a little too little. Nah, 15 is too much. So they they obviously (laughs) did some Finnish magic, you know? Yes. Um, Very clever. You know, Eb- Ebo, Ebo over here just doing some, crunching some numbers, obviously. <laughs> yes. Like, like, I, how, like how I that, absolutely you know, believe doing that. Doing some math. I absolutely believe that. Um, but, but you know, I talked to him about it a little bit, right? And, he, and, I, and I told him the same thing, and he said the same thing. Is He's like, look, if I bring my game out for $10, even if, if he, he's like, people will look at it, and once it goes on sale for 5 or 6 they'll just assume that the game is a low-quality game. Exactly. Like they'll assume it's a throw at the throwaway game, right? Exactly. And like, he's like, if he's like, I want to bring it out at fifteen. He's he initially wanted to do twenty dollars, and I think he remembered. I think he said like, ah, uh, he felt a little bit like imposter syndrome because it's his first shmup and all this stuff. So he's like, oh, I'm gonna do fifteen because I don't want to like think too highly of myself. I told him to do a twenty. And I was like, fuck it, dude. But he's basically well, saying, it's... look, fifteen because you know you have to have faith in your product in some ways, and it's just like it. There's a there's almost a point where it's like it screams low quality to see a 699 game like i don't think that's gonna be a quality game it might be but i'm not gonna expect that out of the game yeah well it's really a an interesting question especially when it comes to how people are finding your game and how what your marketing strategy sort of is um yeah, sure and before i get down the marketing rabbit hole though uh i wanted to ask <laughs> you marketing. as oh, a consumer <laughs> we're gonna go down that but first i want to ask you as a consumer um what games would you be willing to pay full price for and what do you look for in a full price game so we're talking full price 60? 50 to 60 dollars like, are there any shmups? shmups an ishmup yeah in a or shmup. are there any shmups ah yes for you like do i have a like do i have a shmup that i think is worth that that kind of cash or a shmup that you would anticipate paying that much money for 
Yeah, that's a that's a great question, Mark. It's a hard one to answer. I mean, I <laughs> have paid spot. that much money. For, <laughs> Grill well, you. no, it's okay. I mean, I, I have <laughs> paid that kind of money for those shmups, but I don't think that they're worth it. You know, honestly, um, for a sixty dollar price point, I can't think of anything. You know, for a forty dollar price point, I could think of a lot of things. So I think to me, the magic number is forty dollars. Like an M2 STG to me is worth forty dollars, whether it's Katsui or Dangan or Esperade. Like those are solid Grega? forty dollar games to me. It's a great game, forty dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so you go. They're all just. And I want to get your honest opinion, not my. Not this my, is my honest opinion. You know, like these are forty dollar games to me. So you mm -hmm. you would pay forty for those? You'd say, okay, that's a forty dollar shmup to me. See, for me, I would pay sixty game. for these. I would pay sixty for the M2 ports. I would go full. Yeah, I'd go full I on have, those. But I have paid seventy dollars for Futari on 360, and I have paid seventy dollars for Esperade. No, no, so no. I already but, did but it. I want, I'm talking like but, brand new shmup yeah. because you know, like Futari on 360 has the collector sort of thing in it there where you, you have uh, to I pay see what that because you have no fucking choice. Well, Esperade was but brand I mean, new. Yeah, Esperade, Esperade I brought, okay. like sealed. Yeah, yeah I so paid Esperade, the sixty-two ninety. I paid like the sixty-two ninety-nine Play Asia price plus shipping or whatever it ends up being. It was like sixty-five, but I paid full right. price for it. I don't think that. I think actually Esperade is closer to a fifty dollar game because of Irori's Room, but Irori's Room is in Japanese, which annoys me, and so I don't really <laughs> yeah. play it. <laughs> yeah, so me I forget either. that it's there. I don't ever I play that. I forget that it's there. Yeah, but it's like the only because think about it. Dangan has Fever Mode, and uh, Ketsui has Destiny Mode, which is really good. You know, these uh, uh, Grega has Premium. Premium is awesome. Greg Premium, you got. You got Everyone should play Garega Premium, even Plus, if you love Garega, Garega has and you love the, the rank shit. Just play Premium. It's fun. Custom mode ever. Garega custom mode is insane oh. because yeah, you can turn right. it. You can make like four different arranges in custom mode. It is absolutely like that's I have so a video sick. on my channel called like Garega Bullet Hell, where you go, I go into custom mode and I turn it into a oh, bullet I hell. Didn't, I didn't watch it's that. Ab I you should that see out. that. It's absolutely insane. It's a totally different that game. It's awesome. like Battle Back Raid or something. <laughs> Uh, Dude, that sounds awesome. Yeah, so Grega has it, an Esprit insane amount of content that. on it. Or at least that I know of. Like, Esprit doesn't have that kind of stuff. But, no, it does. Like, I always Esprit forget has about a custom room, mode, it's like, and so does Ketsui, but they're just not as insane as Grega's. Grega's cu cust like that. custom mode is absurd. Because it's a Yagawa game. So, you know, there's all this kind of crazy yeah. shit you can play with and tune and do all this sort of stuff with. I just, I mean, I think, like... I think of it like a fighting game, right? In a lot of ways, because like both genres have like the, they're really hinging upon you loving the game mm -hmm. so much that you yeah. continue to pour hours into it. Very like it's similar, gotta get yeah. underneath your skin, you know? And so like, even for a fighting game, like I think like you take like Street Fighter V or yes. KOF, for example, yes. Soul Calibur, the more recent fighting games, yes. like the remake of Soul Calibur. I think those are $40 games. I, I do agree that the additional cosmetics and content, if you want like, extra fancy dresses or whatever else for your character like i'm okay with the extra money for that kind of stuff but like i think the core game for those games are also 40 dollar games to me like they're just right. 40 dollars to me because again it's like what if you fall off or what if the community falls off or like there's so many factors that make the game worth maybe a little bit less like maybe you hit a wall or maybe there's only one character that you end up liking there's just like there's a lot to it high to risk. me that high risk purchases. yeah it's high risk I exactly like Honestly, like if you play Elden Ring or uh, Dark Souls or you know games that I like more more modern games, and you play them once for sixty hours with one character build, and even though there's thousands of hours of content behind it, it's still worth sixty dollars to you, right? Because even just to get through the game the first time, like even just to hit most of the challenges in the game, it's gonna it's gonna take you that much, and and, and the game will force you to do it. Like you can't. You can't technically, like in Garega or something like that, you have to force yourself to say, I'm going to 1cc this, or I'm going to 2cc this, or mm -hmm. 3cc this. And I have to set my own goals. I have to really, really give a shit, right? Whereas like in Dark Souls, if you don't beat a certain boss, you're not going to move forward, dog. Like, you ain't, ain't nothing you can do. You can't, you can't feed. Like, yeah, you got to, like, systems, you can maybe pump up your stats. Those continue systems really get in the way of that. That's why I think Zero Ranger has the best mm -hmm. continue system, because it, exactly. it's similar to it Dark Souls. It will not Souls let you move and, forward. Yeah, it's like, no, you're not going anywhere, buddy. Till you figure this you out. You gotta play the game. Yeah. You gotta play the game. Uh, Space Moth has a really. I don't even like Space Moth that much, but I want to mention this because I think Space Moth is the way every game should do it. Uh, well, arcade style game. The way Space Moth works is let's say you beat stage one and you missed once and you have like 
an extend, and three bombs left, and you game over in stage two. When you hit continue, you'll start over on stage two with that exact set of resources mm -hmm. as if it was a save state. Yes, I know. Right? So then, I love then that. if you get to the end of the game and you go, um, fuck, I don't have enough bosses to tank this final boss, so you start the run over. That's okay. That That's totally that one, okay, but what you that don't one is get very is interesting. like... A, I would say I love Space Moth. I don't know why I have such a soft spot I don't love it. for Space Moth. Maybe <laughs> because it's bugs or whatever, but I do have a real soft even like it looks nice. way old school on the channel. I think Shmup Slam won when it was like super uh, homebrew. That's not even on the YouTube channel because it was so homebrew. I was gonna ask uh, you, I don't think there is you made that up. You just invented uh, yeah. it. No, I'm just <laughs> I should I should probably release it'd be kind of embarrassing, but maybe I should because I still have the file, but I might release make, it on the channel. Make him do it. Write it in the comments. Make <laughs> him do it. Slam. So y'all can make fun of me? Ret but, retro. Uh, Cause it's it's hell. No, dude, it's a limited edition. Just no, put it out on DVD. It's oh, gonna be a sick grab yeah. exclusive. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, Subs Blu -ray. Patreon subscribers Shmup Slam only. one Blu ray. Oh dude. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let, but like anyway, one of the Russian players like copy it onto a torrent or something. Yes, yes, famous. you have to torrent um, it, and then and then I get mad and say I'm I'm never doing another Shmup Slam again. No. <laughs> but um, in Shmup Slam one, Space I actually Moth. played Space Moth DX in it, and so yeah. I, I have a I have a long uh, affection for that game. But yeah, I I, I agree. The only thing that though is good, as right? much because as I love like... Space Moth and I want to say it's the best, I would still give it to Zero <laughs> Ranger. Because the problem yeah. with Space Moth is you can uh, More kind of flexibility. Yes, you can kind of corner yourself a bit, and then newer players will again kind of burn out. Where Zero Ranger, it has a carrot and a stick, and it's like smacking you with a stick, and you're like, "Fuck you, Zero Ranger!" But then it's like, "Wait, wait, wait!" And it holds up the carrot, and you're like, "Oh, Zero Ranger, I know you understand me." And so it's like this. You know, yes. abusive relationship that keeps you engaged. <laughs> Whereas Space Moth is more yeah. of like a. I like the way Space Moth does it, but I still think Zero Ranger is a little a bit better with the continue system. But you know, if you had a if you created if you took Karega and put it in the Zero Ranger format, I still think it would end up being like a forty a forty dollar game because like you would eventually get through and like luck like by luck beat glow squid or get a really good rng on black heart or something right because like games like that are so hinted upon their rng if you get like really nice rng sometimes you can like sus luck your way through yes. something and then you never Absolutely. have to play it again right like i did that in zero ranger like i mean it i don't remember which boss but i was just like mm, not sure i got through that but fuck it, i don't have to do it again <laughs> right, um yeah and, and, and so it's still like you know it's not the like 100 hour 1cc timeline it's still like the the 20 hour 20 to, I would say 20 to 40 hour really good timeline really good game but still to me 40 still to me 40 bucks man that's just that's just how I feel yes but to to a play devil's advocate for the genre um there is a big Please difference do. though between a zero ranger and an elden ring sorry elden ring fans in that yeah, absolutely no matter what you no matter how well and I think elden ring is a very well made modern soul modern game and I'm a, I am a fan of it but the, the thing about these types of games, Elden Ring, even, well, I don't know about Ninja Gaiden, but like Elden Ring, these types of games, is that there is a certain amount of padding in that game that a shmup eliminates, and there's no padding in shmups. It's pure, oh, dude, I was unadulterated cool. gameplay. And so it is a bit unfair because Elden Ring, like, imagine a version of Elden Ring, I wish someone did this, where someone went in and hacked it and chopped out all padding. There's no traversal. There's no item management. But you're, you're just like but battling you're just shit about... nonstop. Yeah. Just non like every time you fight something, something else spawns and you fight it. And you just keep doing that for five hours or whatever yeah. it is. Like mm -hmm. uh, the amount of which gameplay is like Ninja would shrink. Yeah, or that's Ninja Gaiden basically. The amount of gameplay would really shrink. You would not get 60 hours of that. You'd probably get around more in the 20 to 40 hour range, I would think. Maybe even totally. less. I. I totally agree, but I don't. I don't think, though, Mark, that the. Um, I don't think that. So first of all, I, I just want to say, to clear this, I was very worried about Elden Ring. I do not want to play an open world Dark Souls because I. The thing I love about Dark Souls, all of them except for Demon Souls, which doesn't really do this, is that it's one. It's like a Castlevania game to me. That's the modern take on Castlevania because it is really just one big level with a bunch of shortcuts, right? Like, mm -hmm. and you're never really out of danger in like Dark Souls Three or something, unless you're in the hub world. You're there is still an enemy floating around somewhere. Now maybe you can just tank them because you're like level seventy or something. But there's you know you still have to like play the game 
and it's not that far to get to the boss you want to get to. Like, you're not spending a whole lot of time in an open world searching, where is the fucking dungeon? I want to fight <laughs> yes. a boss. I would exactly. like to, I have two hours to play and I would like to fight three bosses. How can I do that? And and you don't know in Elden Ring, you're like, eh. And then you maybe you find three dungeons and maybe you like the bosses, maybe you don't. So there is, there is that. Absolutely. I think Elden Ring does do it well. But I think the big difference between like, you know, like you said, like, um, the condensing the gameplay and and you know like a ninja guide or something like that right is that you have to figure out how to add content to the game enough because i think like so i think this is where it gets into euro shmups land dude this is the problem mm. that i'm having with it right because it's like either like garega is a good one because there's so many ships and there's so many different kinds of ships and all that kind of and stuff and the range modes but like don't forget the range modes yeah absolutely arrange modes but like premium well, custom let me let me let me back up on arrange modes because i think like arrange modes is like new game plus to me i'm, I'm <gasps> we probably Take just focus back. on like the single <laughs> come on it's like playing the game again you no know you way. already played it but now you want to play it again arrange modes yeah. are Okay, a bad arranged mode is definitely like already that. Like seen the, already seen the boss, right? It's not new content. Like, the, like how many bosses are there in a Dark Souls game, right? Like, you're mm -hmm. still getting to new content. But you know, how much like, of that if you stuff is it. new content as far as... Yeah, okay, like, again, if you condense down those you know bosses, I mean? you how many do you really get? Just condense down all the bosses. How many are there? Mm -hmm. And, like, Dark Souls 1, probably, like, 16 or something. Dark Souls okay, 3, right. probably, like, 20 max, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I and would then say in a shmup, about... you you know you don't have as many bosses, but at the same time, the the stages are definitely much more rich and challenging than like a Dark Souls stage. And Dark Souls, but they're rigid. Yes, exactly. But they're rigid, right? So e even even when you're playing through, like even when you're going from bonfire to boss in a Souls game, every time you do it will be slightly different. You're not gonna like. You know, Greg it's like maybe that, an though. enemy's Every patrolling. Every time you do it, it is slightly different yes. with the RNG and stuff. And I like that. Like, that's the thing, you know. So I think, like, more RNG, more... So, you know, it comes to this conversation where, to me, shmups are just another form of roguelite. It's not that different. It's legit not that different, you know. The only difference between a shmup and a roguelite is leaderboards. And like scoring if you want to call it that like there's in more intricacies like if i'm playing hades i don't really give a shit about my score that much i'm just playing hades right but like if i'm playing maybe esperate or something like that maybe i care and i want to like you know push my score up and there's more to do there right but if i if i want to play more hades i'm probably just playing it because i want to see more of hades right but it's very i still I would think say it's i'd say like a the comparison could be for people like casual people is like a shmup is like a devil may cry three something like that and a roguelite shmup is or a euro shmup is like hades you know where in devil yeah. may cry three you actually are replaying the well not many people do this but a good amount of people do this they do actually replay That's the stages for score <laughs> and that becomes a big part of the gameplay but in like a hades well, I never type did of that. game uh, even like mm -hmm. no one's doing that <laughs> that's the thing it's like you know so that this is this comes down to the other thing is like do you want to cater to like the speed runners and the hardcore gamers? In which case, like shmups are perfectly positioned to do that. They're very, very well positioned. That's why a lot of like yes. speed runners, hardcore gamers, fighting gamers, they come in, and they go, "Ooh, another thing to dig into, and I can be up here, right?" But like yes. me, I I've played Devil May Cry three probably ten times. I never once, maybe on the first couple stages, I was like, "Oh, I'll probably try to get A or S." Never once did I try to go through and get. You never the tried fight. to full S rank just, the entire game or anything. Hell no! <laughs> hell no! Because I, I just enjoy the flow of the game. I'm playing it mostly just to kind of run through it and like see try different weapons on things. Like I'm experimenting a lot. Like I love experimenting, but I don't necessarily need to get good grades. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's the difference between like survival players and scoring players in a lot of ways. Right. It's just like, yeah. You, you just want to play around, or do you want to like get you know optimize? And and, and you you can optimize for survival, but it's. You know, but I, st I still think that if you condensed, but even like Devil May Cry, if you condensed all the gameplay, it's still many, many more hours than Grega, right? Grega is a 35 minute game, right? Maybe. Mm -hmm. It's 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 condensed, but like, you, you know, whether you get a 2cc or a 3cc, you, you've you seen those bosses, you've seen most of their attacks, maybe there's some RNG that you haven't seen. You've basically seen everything. Now it's just all about, do you want to see it again and do better? And so the do better part is what makes it like, a, ch a challenge for casuals to want to continue going because they're like 
I mean, I beat the game. It, it, if you're a new game plus player, shmups are good for you, right? But if you like play Chrono Trigger and you go, oh, there's 17 other endings, eh, it's fine. Like, and you're not gonna go back and get like the cool ending where like, you know, Lean does a particular thing or like the frog, you know, or you kill uh, you kill the dude, I forgot his name, the, the main character. You can actually kill the boss in Chrono Trigger in that one sequence where Chrono gets, you know, like caught or whatever. Like if, you, if you're not the player that wants to go back and do stuff like that, which I don't think casual players really are. They want to beat a game maybe once, maybe twice. But I think roguelike players like that because they want to just like, they see every gaming session as like a run. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to do a run. The run can go well, the run can go poorly, but it's a run. You know, it's versus like, like my friend cry, who, who likes to play Legend of Zelda randomizers, right? And it takes, so yeah. like Legend of, uh, it's Legend of Zelda, whatever, yes. Link to the Past randomizers. Or I like played some yeah. Super Metroid randomizers, right? And I like to play when I play Super Metroid. I actually like to speed run it and play kind of like competitively ish, right? Mm-hmm. Rather than playing randomizers where you know sometimes you'll get a really fun RNG and sometimes it becomes an absolute slog. And I think that's sort of the difference <laughs> between a, a shmup and a roguelike is that, like in your brain, you're looking at this like. Okay, roguelite is superior because it's creating this new, fresh content sort of type of experience every time that adds value. But uh, like in my mindset, if if anything, (laughs) yeah, in my mindset, when I look at like, for example, enter the gungeon, something like that. um, Yeah, I don't like those types of level designs because it can get absolutely abysmally boring at times and like repetitive and like, oh. Mm-hmm. What am I doing here? Where versus like Garega, yes, it's a little bit more arranged, funnily enough, than a roguelike <laughs> or those types of things. But within that, there's so much more like visceral quality, and it's reliably better, just constantly, and that you can dig deeper totally. and deeper into it. So it is kind of a, I guess, a question of how you. Yeah, yeah want to value something because I would absolutely argue for example Garega with the leaderboards with the ranges with just the quality of the original game itself uh, with the save states and everything like I think that one could very easily justify itself as $60 because you could play it for thousands of hours without any without breaking a sweat I I think that I think the it, it, it comes down to this for me is that I, what I found, and I've, like I said, guys, I've only been in Trumps for like a year, maybe a, a, some change, right? Like, I am new. I am new. I'm relatively very new, in fact, especially compared to people I talk to on Discord and stuff. Some have been here for 20 years and playing shmups for 20 years. Well, I definitely you know, want to get your your years. perspective, though. I want to get your perspective because yeah, yeah, you're no, I, I guess more I just representative wanna, I just couch that. of a general audience than right. the, the people who sit and we argue about PCB prices and people spend thousands of dollars <laughs> on the games. Like these are, oh these are people just... who have lost touch with reality as far as the general audience, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Look, here's what I think. I think shmups, there is a shmup. I think shmups are for everyone, but there is not, oh, sorry, let me back up. Let me say this the right way. It's late in the day and I'm starting to lose my brain a little bit. Cause I did go to work today. Um, <laughs> um, Oh, right. Like, I I just think that there is a shmup for everyone, but it's not the same, same shmup for everyone. And so I think, like, the a huge, a huge reason why anybody gets into shmups is not to get into Garega and become the next Moglar in Garega. It's to sample 20, 30, 40, 50, sometimes more games and try to figure out if one of them like kind of grabs them and, right. and they get into it. Yeah. And I think that's the danger with the $60 Garega because what if you don't, what if you play it and you go, you know what? Golden Bat's the only fucking ship. I can't do anything else. These other assholes like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's 30 ships, but they all, they're all Zangief to me. And there's only one Ryu and I beat it with Golden Bat and maybe I'll do it a couple more times, but it's not really the game for me. What do you do then, Mark? Cause that's the, that's the, that's my worry is, is, like, yes. is like with shmups yes, is like, exactly. there's like, it's, it's you know there's a shmup for everyone but it's not always the same one yes so and this is where it gets interesting like, because uh, you're sort of you're when it comes to the pricing like mm-hmm. you're sort of balancing two different perspectives when it comes to what would be the maxima outcome for your game for example you stick a 60 dollars price tag on garega 
you're making a statement and that statement is this is a real game and people will pay for this real game and it has value but <laughs> the risk of that is there's gonna be people who look at that and say no it's not and no i'm not paying 60 dollars whereas you might be able to coax them in with a lower price point like 40 dollars, for example but on the flip side it's of very that very difficult but the flip side of that that's dangerous too though is you take Garega, right? The M2 Garega. Mm -hmm. You slap a $20 price tag on that thing, and now it is in sort of the same realm as Operation Steel. And mm. between <laughs> and so now yeah, you get low. you now you get kind of a flat lining of well, why if everything's $20, why do I need an arranged mode? If everything's $20, why do I need a leaderboard? If everything's $20, why bother with the training mode? Why bother with all these extras? If we're gonna hit, if we're just gonna slum down, yeah. why don't we just draw, then you kind of go the Psycho shooting collection brain. Where yeah. you go, all right, oh God. let's yeah. slap no five ROMs on a disc. Who gives a shit about the quality? No training mode, yeah. you know, forget all that bullshit because it's just all about the content, content, content. So that that's sort of the, the well, risk is, can mm -hmm. you can you convince newer players that quality emulation leaderboards uh training modes arrange modes can you convince people that that is actually important content worth paying for or can you not and i don't have the answer to that <laughs> that's in the air i don't, I don't think that's uh, you know uh, it's definitely to be, in the air, uh, but I, but i think it's definitely in the air but i think that you do it the same way you do modern pricing right you bring out garega for 40 dollars, and the arranged soundtracks and the arranged modes and the custom mode are an additional twenty for hardcore players who want to who want to keep playing. Right. You know, yeah. you that's try to good, like segment. That's a good pragmatic solution. Try to segment for sure. it out a little bit. Yeah, yes. it might not work because to your point again, you have to justify in your business expense. Now we're justifying additional cost, but not everyone has to pay that cost. So mm -hmm. is it worth the uh, is it worth the it? time and quality? Yeah. Is it worth it? Right. Like and, if you and, do and the arranged soundtrack and two people buy it, <laughs> it's like, uh, right. was that yeah. worth it? You know. Yeah, but I also think that modern game development is different than Garega, right? Taking a PCB and trying to port it, it's actually harder probably than trying to create a new game in some ways, and it's easier in some ways. And so I think, like, mm -hmm. I don't know the effort side of the equation, which makes it difficult for me to justify the right price point, but I can tell M2 you as a consumer... M2 definitely put in the F. I think M2 are, like, the, of course the perfect it, it, case study amazing. of, like, if anyone deserves 60 bucks, these ports are it. Like, they are it. They are the greatest Absolutely. in the genre with an insane amount of content, extra content, with very good quality, very good um, technical performance, everything's perfect. So it's like reverent, it's, reverent it's, content, right? Because they they're not like bullshitting the game; they're adding to the game, which is so hard yeah. to do for a classic. Like, or like Ketsui, for example, Ketsui Destiny. Not a lot of people talk about this. Oh, I love that. It mode. has a, oh. an extra. Not only does it have Destiny mode, which is really cool, but it actually has an extra arrange, not arrange, an extra variation of Ketsui that was super rare and. You could not play IKD? It otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, like IKD, they, they, the IKD. I think it was like yeah. DLC or something, but I, I ended yes, up getting exactly. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's so that's so there's like and then there's something different about preservation, you know, in some ways. But I think if you're looking at new games, I think, you know, it's a different it's a, it's it's a, it's to me it's a, it's a little bit different in terms of the effort and, and, and things like that. What about of that Crimson Clover? You just, Crimson Would you Clover pay to me is a twenty dollar game. You oh, wouldn't pay, pay sixty for Crimson for Clover? It? Like, okay, Ooh, the problem is Crimson one. Clover shat the bed because they mar they sold their game for three dollars for decades. But outside no, 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 of that, no, forget for that. a decade, I'm, I'm not worried I mean, about like, that. I mean, like, if Crimson Clover came out and it was the only version of it, it is World Explosion. Nah. It came out brand new game. Mm -hmm. It's not if it should be sixty dollars. Would you pay sixty dollars <laughs> if it if sixty bucks? Nah. Take it or leave it. Would you pay? Nah, I wouldn't pay 60 bucks for Crimson Clover. It's an amazing game. Don't get me wrong. Like, I love it. I think at most, I would probably pay 30 to 40 dollars for Crimson Clover. I think it's. I think actually it's a 30 dollar game to me. That's a three zero to me. Um, I think the arranged modes are so good. But to me, like, I'll probably maybe Arcade Boost. But like, Arcade is so hard. But there's that, Arcade Boost. Like, it has like 12 different modes novice. or some shit yeah, like that. It's it insane has, how many modes yeah, that game has. It is, it is, but you know, again, like just speaking from a more like casual mindset, 
you know, it's it's something that I'll play a little bit of Crimson Clover now, maybe like clear a mode, and then I'll go play something else, and maybe I'll come back later when I've forgotten about stuff, because it's like, even though, though the patterns are different, and they get crazy different, too, on some of the arrangements, uh -huh. like a range arcade, yeah. a range boost, then like original boost, all that stuff, the patterns are different. It's still the same bosses, still the same sprites, still the same sounds, still Some the same music. Some of those, though, um, I'm trying to think what the mode is. There's actually a new mode. There's a mode with, like, brand new enemies and bosses and stuff in it. I'm trying to remember what that new mode bosses? is. New bosses? In Crimson Clover? Oh, you're going to have to... You, you better yeah, tell somebody about that. Yeah, it's got new enemies and shit <laughs> in it. It's the, it's the score attack mode, I think it is. Like, you're, in a, you're on a new stage with new enemies, new... I don't even think I've tried that. There's yeah, a score, score attack well, mode. Well, see, there you go. You should try score attack So then mode. I can bump my price up. <laughs> now the price is going up, Mark. Exactly. No, but it's, you know, it, but that's but that's it to me. I think you need more, you just need more content. Like, you just need more, like, more to do that's not just optimizing the same game or optimizing a slightly different variant of a game. And that's just tough. And that's just tough. Well, you know? the thing about it's, that, though, is... Like, like Hades is a twenty dollars game too, you know, or fifteen dollars game, and then has insane amount of content. There's should it be a twenty dollars game? I don't know, but there's like voice acting and all this other shit, and like mm. all this like yeah, well, that, like that's stuff, the larger you know? question is yeah, exactly. That's the larger yeah. question where if you start to sort of zoom this out, there's a lot of games you could think about. It's like it, it is sort of a it's a it's almost an industry chicken question, in, right? It's chicken not just the a egg question. situation, yeah, because. Like, shmups mm -hmm. can't necessarily dictate this completely because the industry itself is... The sh the pricing for games is just f dropping, like, crazy. It's crazy. It's like, yeah, yeah, so shmups are sort of part of that equation and they're kind of extra difficult because they already have a reputation for being cheap, inexpensive, not, not real games in a lot of people's minds. And then you well, add they're on just top as of cheap that. as the attacks that the enemies throw at you. So I think that's <laughs> fair, at least. At least that lines up. <laughs> so like, I remember I can't. I think I made a video about this. How it's like, basically, shmups are often treated almost like mobile games and stuff. You know the way the, they're ported and stuff like that. The it's like oh, you know, absolutely. they're they're like it's like a one dollar game or something. Like okay. So I mean, everybody it, has these games for free, so you can't. It's so that's the other thing is like, every everyone who doesn't have a console is playing Garega. Like ninety percent of the clears on YouTube are not M2 Garega. They are. Yeah, I would say that. You know, but the thing about that though is that I'm learning more and more how obscure arcade emulation is. I mean, it's it's popular among the players, but. You, you, okay, for example, you sample a hundred random gamers, not hardcore shmup people, not even yeah, shmup, yeah, yeah. like, interested people. One hundred random gamers. Fortnite, Fortniteers. Fortniteers. <laughs> how many of them know what MAME is? How many of them know how to start MAME? How many of them know what Battle Garega is? I would say probably... 20%, 20 percent, 20 percent, 10, and 0. <laughs> it's like one, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's like one out of a hundred, maybe. For, for so Garega, I'm giving you zero. Uh, yeah, nobody knows what Garega yeah, is. Exactly. Not, not a single Fortniter knows what Garega is. So Battle I think, like so with you Garega, you Don't could... Pachi or R-Type, maybe. R-Type, maybe. R-Type, maybe. Garega, zero percent. Right. So you could you could easily, I almost feel like, could pass Garega off as like a new game <laughs> these days. Like you could bring it out and be like, it's a brand new game. And a lot of people wouldn't oh, pick no, up I, that. I, it was like a, it was, yes. oh, I've, I've been playing this on my PC for 20 years type of thing. You're right. You're right. And that's a good point. I, not everyone knows that you can just get the free version of the game. Like that's <laughs> yeah. that's actually a very a very fair point. In fact, most people like there's other channels like Shmuptopia and other channels who they're really just normal gamers, and we forget. You're you're spot on because I forget this all the fucking time. I'm like in it now. I, I'm a year yes. plus now, so oh, it's so hard for me to get out of it. Like, but re real like not real. I shouldn't say that. But like a typical gamer wants to go on an online shop like an eShop and hit the button and purchase the game and then play the game like yes. people aren't trying to like torrent and pirate games and hack their <laughs> consoles and stuff that's kind of like a seems a little bit bygone now like it I feel is like it is straight up by, there was a I'll point tell you in this time. in shmup slam 5 i brought mm -hmm. all of these like hacked consoles and stuff and no one played them <laughs> i was like you know everyone just oh, wanted no. to play like the <laughs> the accessible stuff and it's and it's because yeah. well one because it is a bit complicated and I was overest, but I I fell into that trap myself. I overestimated the accessibility of, like, a retro arch on an Xbox. I thought like, oh, this is gonna be oh, pop God. and everyone's yeah. gonna love it, but people are like, 
well, how do I run this bullshit? <laughs> you know? How do I get this to go? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Plus the retro arc, man. Oh, the controls. Exactly. Um, unbelievable. But yeah, but Mame I, was there I too. Agree. Mame had a like, similar mm, lukewarm of perception. Luke, so it wasn't just yeah, retro. Because it's not. Because that shit's not real to people. You know. It's yeah. not like a thing. You can't like you can't like call up your friend who doesn't doesn't play shmups who has a switch and say like. Hey man, you got a computer? You do download the software, all right? And then, <laughs> exactly. um, well, first go exactly. into the config and then enable low latency. <laughs> oh, how's your VSync situation? <laughs> what kind of monitor are you running? You run, you doing like a V? You doing like a? You got a stick? You got an arcade stick? Oh, no, oh okay, you got to rotate so your go, monitor too. You like, got a rotatable get, monitor? Oh, you got to stick right, your right. laptop how, on the side? Hey man, how come this game only <laughs> takes up like? I need to stretch this game because it's only taken up like less than a quarter of my screen and you're just like all right or they have you know, like i had a friend who had an ultra wide monitor and i was playing s bright on it it's <laughs> oh, like a no. it's like a slice on his old you know i guess the, one of those like darius no, size monitors and you know yes playing S -Bright i was gonna say you're just playing the wrong game that's the problem yeah i should have i should have fired up darius it's it it like a By little the way, um, slice news. out of his monitor He's you like, hear what about? the fuck is this <laughs> What's Did that? you hear about G Darius? G, G Darius on Steam getting in a widescreen like arrange mode with bosses and stuff. That's cool. Dude, what the I fuck? I hadn't heard about I, that. I have it on Switch really cool. now. I feel stupid. <laughs> you <Yeah>. fool! <laughs> I fucked up. Um, yeah, G Darius. I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if that part's gonna come out to Switch, but G Darius on on Probably Steam, not, the the, the M two M two M two dev, but Taito funded game. Yeah one of the three only m2 dev games that are on a pc like the cosmic collection i think you know and then this one or whatever g derives but mm -hmm. is um it's gonna have an additional like widescreen i think it's just a boss range or something it looks fucking cool though it's a dual screen mode so they're trying that to like cool. they're trying to take like old Darius bullshit and, like cr <laughs> like first it was like because back in the day it's like this is a three screen game we gotta get this onto a Sega Genesis what the f <laughs> but now they're like no this is a Sega Genesis game we gotta we gotta get we gotta get the screens back <laughs> we gotta like, bring go that the shit back <laughs> it was just way oh, ahead of man. its time it's we yeah um, now the screens are, you think you think we'll cycle like every few every like 25 years the shmups like try to become one screen and then they go they become huge and then <laughs> shmups are gonna uh, I may need to make a video about this already, but the shmups are gonna run into a real problem here soon with aspect ratio. I, as I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it like the aspect ratio apocalypse, because as the aspect aspect ratio is gonna continue to get narrow and wide, it's gonna keep doing that, and shmups are already struggling with 16 by 9. That's a real tough, tough uh, situation for a shmup. Mm -hmm. And you keep stretching that aspect ratio, the poor genre is uh, gonna really struggle in that in that regard we'll see i think that it's just gonna like all the new shmups are gonna end up being like horries and stuff because it's like too natural you know again if you're a casual gamer and you see that vertical screen you're gonna be like this is weird but but, but if you see like a horror the it's thing like, about whatever. vertical shmups though is that it is really unique and it is one of those hooks for yeah. newer players when they're like totally holy fuck like we're, we're scrolling upward and like I ask a lot of new players in yeah there is a good amount of new players who prefer horizontals but i also know that it is actually oh no i don't prefer them it, there, it is an actual like uh catch on point for players because it's so unusual mm. it's like what the fuck we're going up we're and it's you know and it's coming down and it, it like you think about it how often do you play games like that these days it's not super common i guess not but what I we do not, with aspect you know. ratio i have no fucking clue <laughs> it's gonna no be tricky idea. I agree. Yeah, I think again, the answer is handhelds. The answer is phones. The answer is switch. I mean, I, I've thought about this so much, Mark. I don't fucking get it. How how come? And I just maybe it's an Android program. Look, I'm like an armchair developer. I don't know anything about anything. But like, the phone is literally the most perfect shmup device if you think about it. Other than like, you need to connect a, a controller to it, which I'm pretty sure mm, you could solve it. the issue of connecting of connecting a fucking gamepad or a fight stick to a to a phone. Like, I don't know. I think that's a, it. Low I think lag. that's the big. That's the big turtle, because outside of that, there's no reason why you can't put a shmup on a phone. And uh, exactly, but that's, I, even that's like the hurdle Switch, is like, the uh, is the gamepad yeah. and arcade stick. That's it. That's the hurdle. Yeah, I think it's a, yeah. Maybe you're right, but I, I just think it's like phones are huge now, man. Like look at my like I think my phone is bigger than my Switch. It might. Be. This is my phone. <laughs> That's like crazy. I don't have my switch with me. I have my dock, but like this was this is my phone. So I'm just like and I look at this every day, high, extremely high res screen, and I'm just like, 
well, this is already the right aspect ratio. And everyone's yeah. phone is. Like, it's... Here it is. This is it. Like, I know it's not the most perfect thing, but it's... It's, like, in everyone's pocket. So I just feel like there's got to be something you can do to make this work. And if it's just literally a cable that hook, like hooks up my PS4 or Xbox One controller to my phone, if it's just that cable that comes packaged with it or something, there's got to be something to me. But I, I agree with you. Like, yeah, with, like, big screens, I don't know. I'm not... Well, the, the issue with no the phone do with that. is more of the ecosystem of the actual phone mm-hmm. rather than the technology of the phone. Because... The problem with gaming on phones is that they have a very specific design and sh- some shmups, you can make shmups for phones and it's actually a great market and shmups should just do that. But I'm talking more like the m- mainstream meat of the genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. The, I do think there should be a vibrant subsection of shmups that are on the phone. It makes way too much sense not to do that. It's just like, but I, it's just crazy to me. Like, it's like, why isn't Crimson Clover on my phone? Like, it should be on my phone. And, and it should be easy But there's a lot of really like good shmups on the phone, something. though, is the thing. Uh, Don Mako did threes on your phone. That, dude. Uh, yeah, there's, I've heard. Like, uh, Cave did a bunch of ports of, like, DOJ. Like the... It's kind of a shitty, you know, like, low tier version of the game, but still, they did ports of, like, DOJ and all this stuff. On there's the phone. Mushi. There's a Bug Princess for yeah, your phone. Mushi, I think it's like a fucked yeah. up thing with like RPG elements. It's like a Euro, it's like a Euro shmup, man. I saw some like stars and I yeah. saw some like stats, man. I was concerned. Um, very, very <laughs> concerned. Right. So, but yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Like it's, but yeah, I mean, to, to bring shmups to the, you know, I mean, do you go the ride and five route and you just fill up the sides with like other interesting stuff? Like, do you just continue? Because I think, I don't think that stuff really looks that bad. And I don't think people wonder too much when it's filled up with something interesting like i think it's you know i think it's when it's just like a blank huge black space that (laughs) really bothers folks to me like you know like a psycho port where there's literally nothing or even just like a dumb looking background like m2 nailed it again with the gadgets Um, yes the gadgets are you know having like lore or having you know some kind of and that's the other thing is i think like and I don't know if we, we're just, I don't even know what topic we're on now, but I'll tell you something else is shmups need to have net play. For sure, yeah. Like shmups need to have co-op net play. Le- online leaderboards as well. I think that should be... Absolutely online like, leaderboards, but I mean, like, gaming is social now. You Like, not just leaderboards. Like, leaderboards is like looking up your name. Leaderboards to me is the, like, insurance adjuster equivalent of social gaming. It's like... Hold on, what page am I on? Okay, well, see. in the oh, in okay. the have, version have two, that they seven, exist in six, now, okay, I want to get to the three. Th- but I had some yeah, cool exactly. ideas for leaderboard. Like, here's one that trademark. Uh-oh, this is bri- this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, trademark. So if someone does this, someone point back to this podcast episode because this Mark, is don't tell goddamn. Them. This is goddamn brilliant. But imagine this. Okay, leaderboards. You know how you have replays that you can watch and everything, which I think is mm-hmm. really cool. Imagine. Mm-hmm. Have you you played racing games? You played Forza. You are you gonna go with the ghost? Ghost mode, exactly. Yes, ghost mode leaderboards. Because imagine you have no idea how powerful that would be for learning the game. Because you could like copy Moglar like in real time. You could follow him around and be like, oh, he switches yeah. shot well, here. R- he does this. RNG though, Mark. But yeah. No, no, because you're on the same replay as him. So you're on the same oh, RNG oh, as him. S- yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're in his like replay, yeah, 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 and you yeah, have a yeah, go- yeah, yeah. And, and he's a ghost, and you're playing and you're his replay. Like or you can swap it, and he's the player, and now you're the ghost, and now you can shadow his replay, and you can like swap them back and forth. That's I awesome. I think that would I be love insane. That idea. The other idea that I had, we can trademark all these after the show. You, you gotta cut these out. You're gonna cut these out. Anyways, <laughs> I already know. You know, no one's gonna hear. Lawyers, these, lawyers are working on a copyright as yeah, we speak. Which is patents, uh, patents call my, pending. Let me, yeah, let me call my engineering lawyer real quick. But it's like, I always thought it'd be interesting to have um, a world, not a world record, but like, let's say you pick a re- like, let's say you pick a score you want to chase, right? I'm number 10, I want to chase number eight. You hit number eight and you go, you're launched into the game and you're playing. But picture in picture, you're seeing how number eight, their progress and your score progress against theirs and their route at the same yeah, time as a absolutely. replay next to yours. So like, so like, let's say you get through stage one and you have 127 million, but they have 128 million. It shows you minus 1 million. So you know you're on track or Absolutely. behind their score. Yes. Stuff like ba- basic shit, like you said, racing games is like the exact way to do it. 
to me. Yeah. And, and I think stuff like that would be great. I'll, I'll mention another game that I think that one, one, no one plays. Two is like, again, super underpriced. It's called Revolver 360 Reactor. It's a Steam game. It's a very innovative shmup where you rotate the screen in three dimensions. Um, so if you can rotate a bullet out of your view, like MC Escher style, it's, it doesn't exist mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Whatever. It's an innovative shmup and that's all great, but it's not a very good like bullet hell game or anything. It's, it's quite easy. There's health. Don't worry about that. The point is when you're playing the game, your leaderboard position is a part of the HUD and updates in real time. So like, let's say you're on stage four, it'll say like you're 3000 and like as you're scoring, that number continues to like go down until, you know, so like you, like as you're playing the game, you can kind of gauge your own progress against the leaderboard because it's it's in real time as you're playing. It's not like at the end where it says, "Oh, you made three thousandth place" or whatever. It'll it'll it's there the entire time you're playing. Yeah, that's which I think really is cool. also genius. It's like because you see yourself going up too, so it's like a positive thing. Also, it's like, "Oh, I'm now oh shit, I'm two thousandth now," and like, "Oh shit, I'm one thousandth now," and like that kind of stuff. Also, Revolve with 360 Reactor, same game, has a replay feature where you can pull up someone's replay and any time during the replay you can take over. You ready for another leaderboard trademark brilliant genius idea? Oh, God. Ready? Are you prepared? Cut all these out, man. I, I'm, I'm going to try. Kumite mode. And the way it works <laughs> is you match up with your... So you have your friend. Yes. You have an online lobby, oh, right? Yes, You dude. match up with your friend. And 100%. then it puts you side by side. And it tracks... You, now you're playing... Like, and you can do like different challenges with your, against your friend. Like, okay, the 100%. person who survives the longest wins. Or the person who gets the highest score wins and it's like side by side i think you know what i mean like that would be yes, super cool and I it's totally done in real time mean. but it's not but it's not like you guys have to be synced up on the same screen exactly yeah because mm-hmm. you're playing you're you're kind of playing the game locally but you're also displaying it over the, online so that there's exactly. not going to be extra lag in your gameplay but at the same time exactly. you're interfacing with each other yeah, and you set a restart restart timer on that, right? It's yeah. like DOJ or something, and you set a, you know, a ten minute restart timer on it, and then after that, you just you just play. And then if that person is like, oh fuck, I lost, I'm gonna desync or like just leave, they can just leave. You can it'll bring in someone else, or it doesn't even have to. But you're still playing your DOJ, right? You're gonna do it anyways. You're gonna play well, the game it anyways. Also, it also has a ranking system. It also has a ranking system, like in fighting yeah. games. So you could be like S rank. You know, and you could be like bronze rank. Literally doing, yeah. you could be literally doing like net play matches against people in Ketsui and stuff. I thought that would be pretty cool. Yeah, like, and you're bronze rank, so you're just trying to get through like stage one and two, and the <laughs> yeah, next person exactly. is two, and you're brand new to shmups, and you're like the canisters. You both die at the canisters every time, and then one guy gets through the canisters, like, oh fuck, and then fuck like that guy. now you have <laughs> exactly. to get through the yeah, fuck that guy. Now you have to get through this fucking canisters of the stage two boss. But no, I, I love I love it. I love it, man. That's genius. A- again, it just needs more. You just got to have more. We do this. We do this on our, on our own. Like you do this and Shmup Junkie does this. But like the way we do it, it's still like, like other than Shmup Slam, which is genius, obviously. The way we present Shmups to people is like, this is your pet project. This is your hobby. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Not like come to us. This is our hobby. Like, let's do it together. Yeah, exactly. It, it's like, I guess the difference would be, like, right now, if you think about it in, like, computer terms, we're still in, like, the tape trading era of the genre, where we're, like, <laughs> like a, a new hot album comes out, and we want to pirate it and make mixtapes and everything. We're, like, mailing that shit Hell to each yeah. other. We're, like, burning it on cassettes and mailing uh-huh. it to each other to make it work. We need to get the genre needs to get a bit more into the future where it's like built into the game it's built in systems because yeah. imagine because with fighting games for example perfect example is like discord fighting games versus games with built-in online i mean come on there's no comparison yeah. right if you go discord route which i have done you know you get you spend hours trolling through all these different chats and yeah. hey do you want to play i don't know i don't feel like i'm eating lunch or whatever oh do you want to play fight maybe kate's in pretty four, good though maybe in four weeks i'll play with you but yeah and then yeah. or you're playing tekken <laughs> ranked you you hit find match 10 seconds yeah. later you're in the match also like, gives that's... you incentive to play like why would i again like we're going back to the greg example like if i cleared the game and I don't want to go for another clear with another ship, I'm kind of done with it. Like, maybe I optimize the ship, but, like, I mean, I got my clear. Maybe it took me 50 hours or something. I'm, I'm going to be done with it. But if you're if there was some, like, caravan mode 
three minute stage, a bespoke stage, or five minute stage or something, and you have to play against someone and you only get like three tries. So it's like, even if your caravan score is like rock solid, you still have to execute during yeah, exactly. that moment. That's what I love about Shmup Slam. That's what I love about the Kumites that I do. That's what I love about live Shmup content is that it doesn't fucking matter if you're a world record holder. You're a modeler, you go in, you miss on the first boss because your hand slipped. Yeah. Now it just got interesting. It's you yeah. know, and, and, and that's and asynchronous is great, but live is great, but there's no reason not to definitely not to have not to have both. It also keeps you I think it also keeps you sharp on your game, right? Like Yeah, you know, even a, if you're like a, a fun way to get board holder. Interacting with yeah. the genre. Mm-hmm. And like with Schmup Slam, that, like, that's that's yeah. the whole point of the event is to like to give you a reason to play the games outside of just your intrinsic motivations. Like to give you a platform where Okay, I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna play Grega for 400 hours this year because when I play it live, I want to clear it, <laughs> and I want to be good, at, so good at the game that I do it live, you know. And I need to build up yeah. that consistency and practice and all that sort of stuff. It's a platform, right? It's like the mini Oscars or whatever. It's like, hey, yes. like <laughs> yeah. stri strive for perfection, and we will honor you. Yeah, it, it's really interesting. I. You know the comp the competitive part of, of Smups is something that I don't get so far into because I just I feel like even though I've got like whatever 70 clears or whatever like on my YouTube channel and all this kind of stuff and like I just posted one I actually did a clear today it was like a first try clear so like I'm not playing difficult games you know you're not gonna first try clear a difficult game that's easy for you in your difficulty spectrum right especially if it's the first time playing it or you've played it maybe a couple times when you just end up clearing it but the point is like. I haven't found my Garega yet, like, because I still feel like every game that I played, I like it, but I don't know if I want to go down the full, the I think, full rabbit hole of, like, I think getting there, good. You're coming, like, it's you're, scary. I know exactly where you are, because I was exactly in your shoes a few years ago after I cleared mm -hmm. Dodon Pachi the first time. I got my first one all. I even wrote it in the comment, or in the video description of Dodon Pachi. I was like, it, I was so relieved and so done with the game, I was like, I don't know if I'll ever do a two-all in the game. You know, maybe someday. <laughs> but it, when I was typing that, I was like, I'm never doing that. I'm just saying this to sound cool. Yeah, and then you, you what, happened was, like what happened was I sat on the Discord and chatted with Jamers and Blaquisto and Prometheus for a year and a half. And I was like, oh, and I got the, got the tingles like, oh shit, I gotta play this for real now. And I think my advice, my advice to you is I think the game that I think would be a great fit for this is Zero Ranger because I got a two-all in Zero <laughs> Ranger and it was the funnest two-all I've ever done. Nothing came close to practicing Zero Ranger for the two-all. Like, Dodonpachi was more rewarding because it was more brutal and insane and difficult. Yeah. But there were times where I wanted to take my computer with Dodonpachi, like write Dodonpachi on my computer and like throw it out the window. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> this game is driving me insane. I'm going to end up in the mental hospital because of this game. But Zero Ranger, it was like joy and a just big smile on my face. And I remember playing it. It's like raining outside and just warm, fuzzy memories. Even though it's tough, the game is just oh, really... The game is really well built to not make you want to rip your hair out. And it's so fun. Like, you start swinging, you're, you're like, you start going to sword mode, yeah. and you're just slashing the shit out of everything, and you're just like, I'm just gonna slash everything. It's just, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's a really fun to you, all. So I'd say that, you have options, I would say do you know? that one. Do Zero Ranger to you're all. Right. That's I'm the gonna one, do I it. think. And, and I just posted a video of a one-all, because someone asked me, wait, if you do the first loop, is it considered a one-all in Zero Ranger? Yes. And I was like, why not? Yeah, it is. it is. It is one of them. And so here's what happened, Mark. I couldn't get out of one two, one dash two, for like two days because I just couldn't. I don't know. Like it's I just a tough, kept dying. It's a tough stage two though. I, I don't want to tell you. Stage is two is insane. like almost harder than stage three. It's a tough stage Ye two. Oh, I think it's way harder than stage because like again, I think once you get your charge shot, it's, it, you're still Metroiding, right? You have nothing. You have front shot and back shot. Um, back shot is anyways, very OP though. Once you get back used shot to it, is my it's, shit. Yeah, it's powerful. It's mighty. It's my shit. It's everything to me. I use backshot. Oh man, I use backshot on everything. But the, but the point is that when I got out of one two, I got my one all instantly. That that run, that run, I got my one all. Yeah. And I just kept playing it, and I did my first zero ranger in game continues two all. 
So like not with the TLB or anything, because I don't want to like reset my game and do all that stuff. But like, you know, I beat like the final boss and all that stuff. But like I did it using the in-game con eight continues or whatever, nine, conti whatever they give you, right? Yeah. And I eight, had actually I never it. done that because, yeah, I think it's eight. And I, I had never done that because I was I was like, well, I'm going to, you know, I, I want to go for, like you said, a two all or a one all. But it's like. I was like, I'm just gonna keep playing because I like this game. And then I ended up doing that. And then I thought, well, that's kind of an achievement because I actually haven't technically done that. Like I haven't technically like beaten the game with the tools that the game gives you. And they, you know, they gave me a score at the end and everything. It's considered legit in the game's like mythos, right? It's not, they don't care about credit, like their whole like, you know, Bud Buddhism and all this stuff. And I think I even got the new music that you get at the end when you're flying out because you get new music if you do it with the in-game continues and I remember hearing that music going like oh shit the developers rewarding me for doing an 8cc <laughs> 8cc <laughs> yes. to all and I felt good and I was like I, now I want to keep playing this game more and like you said I, I do want to eventually get well the fun thing about Zero game. Ranger is that it's very beautifully designed to be kind of like it's kind of like Ray Gun this way but a little less frustrating where it has this nice flow and rubber band to where you, for example, if you felt like it, you could the just rank. play <laughs> the game over and over and over, just full runs, full run the entire game for like two weeks and get the two all. You wouldn't have to, like in Dota Pachi, you can't do that. You have to like, Dota Pachi, you have to save state oh, grind dude. certain things for That's hours right. and hours and hours to make that work. But because of the way Zero Rangers made, kind of like Rega, you could just full run the game over and over and slowly and surely you're optimizing this, you're optimizing that. Oh, you figured out a strategy on stage two, boss. Hey, you figured out how to get through the train section without getting murdered as much. And maybe you die one less time there. You use that extend, you carry that, and your your route just slowly... Like, think of your route as like a rope that's all wiggly. You slowly are pulling it straighter and straighter <laughs> and straighter. Rope. Like, slowly and surely. Yeah. It, and, and if you pull on one section, it like straightens out another section. It's very right. organic in that way. So I'd say that would, I think that would be the one for you. That that would help I'm you sort of turn going. the corner there. You just, just all you have to do too is you just every day, just run one run of Zero Ranger. Just every day play Zero you're Ranger right. one time through. And like over two or three weeks, you're going to get that to all because it's going to, and it's going to be fun by the end. You're going to be like, this is awesome. You're, there's going to be a point where you figure out stage two and now stage two is fun. And then you're like, oh, stage two isn't too bad. You know, now that I think about it, stage three isn't so bad. And then you go into stage four, and then you'll you'll hit that turn. And then all of a sudden, the two all is not only like achievable, but it's actually super fun. I agree, and I will be doing that. And it's a great advice because I that game does it. It really does. You're right. Like it doesn't bother me so much. Like, and I'm not a save state grinder. I mean, I'm just telling everybody at home who knows, you know, who doesn't know a little bit about me and my play style. Like, I'm. Um, not a speedrunner. I'm not an, ar an arcade one CC or pre shmups. Like, I like them because they're fun, um, and because they're simple. And 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 I. And, but I don't like when I when you get into like save stating and like figuring out bosses and stuff like that. I get it, and it's really smart and all that stuff. But to me, it just kind of feels a little bit like homework. And there's something right. about it that just doesn't feel like I'm playing the game. It feels like I'm just trying to like solve this problem to be able to then be good enough to then play the game and i don't i don't want i don't want that buffer like i just want to play like i just you know when, when i played fighting games mark like i would go online i wouldn't even i didn't lab shit like i would just, <laughs> just go, go online straight, straight online yeah. i mean I, I i did i did lab stuff but it's like i would go online and get my butt whooped and just get better and better with normals and then eventually i would start to see like you know what if i had a combo for that that would have ended mm. that match and then i'd go and figure out like one combo and then i would right, incorporate yeah. it and keep going like i wouldn't spend like i wasn't like a all day labber where i'm just like what's this? i never did a single setup didn't know what one was like i was just like a very much like my my oki was jump in medium kick that's the only oki i know it's the only <laughs> oki it's cross cross up medium kicks so all you're gonna get from me and hopefully i time it right or you try to reverse or whatever that's it but it's just <laughs> right. like one of those things that i played and i got better by playing and i, I want to do the same with shmups but but you're right like certain games it's it it's you know it feels frustrating to do stages in one and two it, it did for don on pachi i actually ended up playing for one week for one week it was only one week i played starting at stage four <laughs> i used um grego's trainer i played on mister i used grego's trainer and i just started it on stage four and set it up to where i'd have like a decent amount of stage four and i just played four five six four five six four five six for like and a week you know funnily for survival 
in the first loop, Dodonpachi is like that too. Like for the first loop, you can do that. It's you can exa- just fire I'm talking up, about the first loop. Yeah, you can just fire up Dodonpachi and pl- just play through it the first loop once a day, and yeah. you'll you'll get the one CC or the one all eventually. Well, you have to be you have to be careful because with Dodonpachi, if you're playing it once a day, but you're playing it to hopefully get the one all that day, then you play it differently. So you have to be careful with that because if you turn on the game and say, I, today is a day, I'm gonna get a one all today and you miss on stage two mid because you were being an idiot and just like missed a dodge or you're nervous or something, you're gonna reset, right? You're not gonna keep playing. You're not gonna take those three bomb losses and you're not gonna like- I think with DDP you can because it's so generous with bombs in the first loop. I mean, no, man, the game I use gives everything. you so <laughs> many toys in the first loop. I know, that but- You could like die in stage two and just keep keep on trucking and probably be fine. You know, someone told me that actually. Um, yeah. It was a smart thing they were like they were like oh on my on my clear i i, I don't remember who it was it was like on my clear i missed i missed on stage two boss and i still ended up clearing yeah but because I it gives you so many damn practice, bombs you could like bomb spam the final the stage six boss you could just bomb spam him if you wanted uh, but i but i wanted to bomb spam the stage six boss because i don't like fighting that boss i don't think the patterns are cool i don't think the boss looks cool i, don't oh, think it I love sounds that boss cool. I, one like, of my favorite I think bosses the boss ever looks like it looks like a it looks like a uh, a fried chicken, not even a fried chicken, like a roasted chicken, like something without arms or legs. Like it's just like this weird shape. That's just like a bizarre, <laughs> like it doesn't even look like a ship to me or anything cool. It just looks like this like weird thing. And the patterns just seem like, and then needles. Oh, it's just I, four bombs for needles, man. Four bombs all day. Got to keep them for needles because I played CS and CS has no stopping power. Are you, think, are you thinking real, about real the, uh, this the ninja star pattern where it shows it throws those like little purple ninja no no stars. ninja stars is okay that that did take me time to understand oh no, you're I'm, talking I'm, about I'm, the final oh the final with the the yeah, spears the yeah that thing sucks um it's like hard to even see i love that pattern. But, uh, there's a trick yeah. to it though yeah, if sure you, you want do. if you don't want to deal with it is you can go to the bottom of it and you just slowly advance forward and then you're telling me uh, about laser bomb and then pull back and then just slowly advance and you can you can beat that pattern with like three bombs by doing that. You just slowly go forward, and then when you get close, laser bomb, pull back during your invincibility, slowly creep forward, and then do it again. You can do that like three times and clear it with three bombs, I maybe did, even two. I did four. I did four <laughs> straight did. laser bombs, one after another. One, two, three, four. And did I you do the slowly for creeping pattern. forward? Did you do the creeping forward part? Oh yeah, I was moving up this. No, I was like in its face by the time at the end where I was point blanking it. Like I, I have to, I'd have to watch my clear, but I think I was like point blanking by the end and literally mashing bomb, going, "Please die! I want this one all so bad." Oh, Just go, what I'm go what I'm hell. talking about isn't a point blank. It's that. Um, those, that pattern it throws, you can dodge it. You can dodge the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you were saying it's a dodge. By, yeah. by just slowly moving forward. But the problem is once you get too close, you can't dodge it anymore. So then you you bomb and you pull back and then you can just dodge the pattern again. I do that in the second loop. That's my second loop strat. Yeah. But it works in the there first loop as well, very well. <laughs> but yeah, either way, I, I like mentally losing three bombs or four bombs to me i can't like i'm just like this is a bad run like if it was a roguelite or other another game like i would just be like and i lost like that many resources i'd just be like dude i like because but the I thing about a shmup though that makes feel. them fun is that uh they're all designed especially caves anyway that you could beat the game with no bombs and no like in one extent like if you just play well enough so there's always that sort of hope there even if you get absolutely well Especially in the first loop. In, in second loop, Dodon Pachi, that's not as much the case because of Hibachi. Well, but without Hibachi, okay, you take out Hibachi there. Um, you could, there's always that hope. Like, you could triple death in stage two and you could still get that <laughs> one uh, one all. There's always that hope. Which is really, yeah, which I think is really cool about the genre. It is really cool. It's That's super tough for me mentally. Like, I have a lot <laughs> of mental blocks with shmups, but that's one of the big ones. It's like losing resources... And like the fear of losing resources, then getting to the end and being like, well, if I had like three more bombs, like, because <laughs> yeah. it's not, you know, yeah. so, so it's like, it's not like I would rather reset and just keep those three bombs than like go to the end and just feel blue balled by like, oh God, if I had like one bomb, like it would be the end or whatever. But I really lost like six. When you lose like five or six, oh my God, one five. Like so many runs, man, in one five, I <laughs> yes. would lose like six bombs and just go hell. like, fuck. Well, yeah, because I want to, like, cradle and all that shit, but you need at least one or two to cradle, and then I would, like, try to save them. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't like bombs. 
I, I, I don't, I don't love, re like, I, don't, I like resource-based, it's another reason why I think Crimson Clover is so brilliant. You like right? the, uh, it's still the, like, the energy bar system. Yeah, totally, because then you're never actually out of it. Like, you never feel like you lost something. You never feel like, well, you've lost something, but you never feel like you lost a stack. Like, six bombs and Dildon Punch is like, oh. Yeah, I love like, that. Like, it's so painful, I personally man. love that because it, it adds this Makes really you play interesting. Better. Well, it adds this really interesting mental dynamic to the game that's very, very cool. Frustrating and scary, but very cool because, <laughs> like, because the game is always sort of like patting you on the shoulder and saying, are you scared? You just hit the bomb button if you're scared. Just hit that bomb button, everything will be okay. Um, and what's funny is what you'll find in Dodonpachi is that the bravest you are is when you're out of bombs. So you're out of bombs. Absolutely. And you got not, now yeah. you're just playing full out, nothing to lose. And but the funny thing about Dodonpachi too is that I always said, uh, when I was doing my one, my two all runs is that the first life is actually like 10 lives because if you can carry that first <laughs> life it just has this real powerful momentum to it so if you can get yeah. like for like once you make that first death in Dodonpachi and you bleed then it's like oh it's very rare to play as well as your first extend then you start getting shaky then you start getting nervous but that first extend you, it's like worth 10 extends because it's because of that whole, do I bomb, mm -hmm. do I not bomb, am I scared, am I not scared? But once you kind of get past that, get past the sort of fear of the bomb and whether you're not bomb or whatever, uh, it gets really fun. And so, I just think it holds. I think it, I think kind of holds. I think kind of holds new players back a lot because when Probably you first does. and you, I, <laughs> yes. I, 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 I don't know. I, I just it's my perspective. I, I think that you know my theory is that people like to dodge. This is why Toho is so popular. Because yes. you always feel like Though you're Toho dodging. Toho has the same bombing system for yeah, a yeah, lot it, of games. It, it, it does, but it's just, you know, but it's, and you're right, it, it does have the same bombing system, but it, but in like Toho and Cave, I should say, like Bullet Hell in general is popular because I think like slow bullets, you always feel like you're dodging, but I think people want to dodge, which is why, and they want to learn, which is why, it's fun. which is why they go for the dodge and then they get hit and they get <laughs> yes. punished for it. They get punished yeah. for trying because that wasn't a time to try. That was a time to hit the bomb button because you were 93% sure you were going to make the dodge, but it wasn't 100%. And hitting the bomb button just never feels satisfying in those moments where you want to try to dodge instead. So, you know, yeah, I, a, I enjoy games. A real bit of advice you know what I is mean? like um, holding still, just holding, holding your ground in shmups, especially bullet hells, is a very powerful technique where rather than... Because what often happens when people are playing Bolt Hells, about this. Yeah. Uh, when you're early, when you're newer to the genre, especially, is the player that I've seen one or two players like this, but they're incredibly rare. The player that dies because they don't move as a new player is like an incredibly rare beast. Most new players die because they get antsy and they move way too early, and so like an interesting strategy for learning Bullet Hells is just like under like considering not moving as an input like i am now not moving and like that's how i kind of learned to dodge better in bullet hells because i wouldn't just neutral instead like of fighting game instead neutral of, yeah and like instead of thinking of not moving as i'm not doing anything like think of it as an it as like an input like i'm hitting neutral now and not moving yeah and and but you're sitting there and you're sort of like prepared to move but you're actively engaged and not moving because the game's that, that's kind of the death of a lot of new players is they get antsy and they start moving and all of a sudden they get themselves cornered way too quickly. I totally agree. I think the funniest thing was one time I was playing early in my, or very early in my shmup career and I was just like getting a drink of water and I, I had hit start on the game but I didn't realize it and the game just started and there were all these bullets on the screen but none of them were hitting me for like <laughs> 10, maybe 15 seconds. It was like mushy yeah. or something and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was just like staring at the screen. And then I started to be like, I wonder when the ship is going to get hit. And yeah. like, you know, and then I restarted the game and I tried again and the RNG, like the bullet waviness yeah. of the RNG caught me the second time a little earlier. And then, but I was still like, huh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Or, or like when you watch a replay, like a Moggy replay, like a Moglar replay or a Jamish replay, and you watch them not move in a particular moment 
and you're like, oh, they're about to get hit, but that bullet just flies past them, and you're exactly, just like, yes. oh, I don't have the skill yet to know <laughs> yeah, exactly. when I'm gonna get hit, so why am I moving? Exactly, um, yeah. Holding your ground is super important. It's it's super important. It, yeah, not moving is so is so good. I I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's and then I, I think learned that lesson you, the hard way you know, because I came oh from playing games like Smash Brothers Melee, where literally you cannot hold still in that game. The whole point is to constantly be moving because of the way that game's designed and everything. So I Marvel, was like Marvel's trying to way. yeah. So mm -hmm. I was like trying to like a dash dance bullets and shit. I was trying to be like, oh, I'm tricking you. I'm like juking the game. The game's like, no, you're not. You're cornered. Now you're dead. <laughs> like, yeah, you've like been, you, the concept all you're doing of, is putting yourself in the corner. And yeah. funny enough is like learning that concept actually helped me get better at fighting games too. Because once I learned yes. like in traditional 2D fighting games, like, oh, holding still is actually really useful in a lot of footsie situations and just standing your Walking ground. Walking forward. Just walking, walking forward. Walking forward. <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah. I love it. You ever yeah. see someone, you ever you put up a fighting game and the first thing you see is somebody walking forward, just, you're terrified. You're like, man, this guy has no scruples. And then you're <laughs> yes. terrified. And then you get then yes. you get thrown. You're not even trying to do anything. You get thrown. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. No, I, I think that like, that there, it's a phenomenal fundamental lesson. <laughs> And and I and I think like a lot of new players, they don't know when when they've been walled and when they miss a dodge. Like they yeah, see they don't, something and they go. There's a big well, difference between those two. Yeah. There's a big difference, right? Because I think like they'll see something and go, well, "How the? There's no way for me to get through that. This game is broken." <laughs> exactly. And it's like, yes. And I respect that. Like it's not by the time they got walled. Yeah, there probably wasn't. And then they go. No, there well, wasn't because was you. Gamers, I yeah, I would have dodged that. Because you that. died. Like, no, not like, really. Technically, <laughs> you died ten seconds ago. You just didn't realize it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's like when you cornered your you corner yourself in Street Fighter and you're getting crouch medium kicked to death. It's like n no, you walked back into the corner. Now the game <laughs> yeah. seems impossible, but it wasn't impossible twenty seconds ago when all you had to do was cut through and restream or do whatever you need to do and all these techniques and all this kind of stuff yeah i yeah. mean it's or it's like it's, that it's scene in breaking bad when when hank is about to get killed by the drug dealers and walt's like please beg for your life and hank's like don't you know i'm already dead <laughs> you know it's like that yeah. you're you're wall i died don't 20 minutes don't ago, I'm really knew. notorious for this actually especially in the second yeah. loop it's like no you're actually already dead <laughs> yeah the slow death i but I think, but I think there's also another lesson there. It's like, and I think this might be more for you. It's like, and you get into old school games where you're moving preemptively because everything is aimed, versus yes. bullet hell, which is trying to trap you with yes. like, you right. And so like, if you're playing Raiden, or like maybe even Mushi OG sometimes, like the first like Mushi 1.0 yes. OG because like the OG bullet mode. speeds like. Yeah. yeah, don't, yeah, like, honestly, d ma like, maybe stand still, but also, like, if you're gonna move, you have to commit. You can't, like, wiggle or, like, do what Mogler does in Ketsuya. Like, you have to, like, keep going in that direction. Otherwise, some sniper bullet's gonna hit you. Yes, yes, and that uh, is hard for me, because I'm always doing, like, these little cutbacks Dude. and stuff. I think I'm so clever, then I get hit in the face. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> From yeah. like something from the back, yeah, some beetle that's in the bottom left corner of the screen didn't even see it. Like, um, yeah, so that's, you know, like, I think the biggest thing for, I, I always tell players, and I, and I talk about this as like the shmup, the, the player triangle or whatever, which to me is just really three things, right? It's sticking with a hard game because you have to, you know, you have to kind of like stick with it and push through some of the harder parts to really improve and grow, grow as a player. It's yes. playing different types of games because, like you said, a bullet hell is gonna be different than our type is gonna be different than you know mm -hmm. Raiden or whatever, and it's playing easy games, playing easy games, and getting clears in easy games along the way because it's like, you know, it's like a little snack or a dessert, and they also teach you little things, but they also, more importantly, they build your confidence. Absolutely. Right? Like, I put in yeah. gun knack today, and uh, about a year ago, I tried to play gun knack, and I did okay. I didn't like clear it or anything. I put in gun knack today and I did a one try clear. I didn't, I wasn't, I played like shit. I bombed about 400 times. Um, I just kept, I was like, cause now I know, now I know, man. It, if you want to clear a game, you are not there to have fun or play the game. I mean, you are, but not really. Like you're there to beat the game and you need to use everything you have. If you need to bomb, you fucking bomb. If you see a pattern you hate, you bomb. If you <laughs> yes. see something relatively cool that looks interesting, it's probably gonna kill you. You know, preemptively <laughs> bomb, bomb for fun. Just, just, just do it. You know, you spend those things. And it's one of those things that like, I cleared the game 
And it was it was a fun it was a super fun time. And I think like there's players who only will only work on DOJ, and I respect that. I get that. But if they go to play R type, it's gonna be a nightmare. Or if they go to play Raiden, it's gonna be a nightmare. Then there's players who only play easy games, which I did for a little while, which again is good. But then if you want to play a harder game, you don't really know how to approach it because everything has come so naturally for you. You know, easy one alls, first try, second try, five tries, something simple, right? And then if you don't play different kinds of games, you kind of paint yourself into like a bullet hell corner or a old school game, like memo mm -hmm. game corner, where it's like, oh, I memorized this boss. Now I never have to play it again. It's like, that's not going to happen in Dodon Pachi. Like you can route no. it, but it's never going to be memo. Like you yes. going to have to move your ship. Um, you know, you're not going to like sit in a corner and go, hmm, got this done. You know, found the safe <laughs> nope. spot for this guy. Nope. Dodon Pachi um, has a yeah. much more RNG than people realize. Like it's that game, game throws it's some throws game. some stuff at you. The bullet drift in that game is is just weird. Like, there's parts of stage four that I like. Some days I'm like, oh yeah, whatever, like no problem. And then other days I'm like, how did that bullet get so close? When? Who <laughs> yeah. shot that? God, I love stage four. That's one of my favorite stages in that. the game. I think Dodon Pachi would be an amazing game if it was four, five, six. I don't think. Well, I one, think two, it, three. I, three well, is good. One, don't one get me wrong. I like three, but one can go. <laughs> <laughs> one can go because one is just one a tutorial mode. <laughs> yeah, no, I think they really should have made one like a dip switch that you could turn on. That's called training mode. And you just play stage one over and over and over. One needs, they they actually got rid of it in, in DOJ though. DOJ has no stage one equivalent. They're like, nah, fuck that. There's just, you basically start on stage two in DOJ. Yeah. So it, I think DDP, stage two is so good though. So it should be two. Three, I'm not a huge fan of three, I'll admit that. <laughs> um, four, five, and six. I love all the stages except three. Three is kind of weird. Well, you're a huge fan of the game, so I, you know, I like, I, yes, I wanted that's true. you to say that. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want you to say, like, half the game sucks. Like, that would be probably not great as a fan of the game, but, like, you know, it's, I think two is okay. I think there's some bullet visibility issues with the red background. Yes, that I, absolutely. It would, yeah. And, and then, like, I, I like the mid boss, but I feel the like tank? two has. The, the tank's yeah, fun. I, I like the mid boss. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I like the mid boss, but I would have expected more between the mid boss and the final boss. Like, it's like well, two has the, this really weird. The part weird about it is the the chaining of stage the two. The fake the is, fake chain. Well, I call it the fake chain because who doesn't get that? You get the chain. Like you free free chain after mid boss. Everyone gets it. Everyone gets a one sixty, even if you had a zero, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the idea of that section in uh in stage yeah. two. It's like. Here's, you know, here's a big juicy chain for you to kind of boost your morale a bit because you're about yeah. to be destroyed in the rest of the game. <laughs> and it is <laughs> kind of an iconic, and it kind of is like an iconic chaining section, funnily enough. Like you'll, you'll see it in all the other DDP games. There is a sort of end stage to chain somewhere in there, like that bunker type section. I don't know. I, there's the, it could be better, but I also just, it's like a, it's like a bonus a bit you know it's like when you play yeah. Star Fox and they have those bonus stages I feel like that section's like a little bonus run for the player it's like now you get right. to go crazy and on. just rack up all these bl you just blow shit up and get all these chain hits you're right and, you know what yeah. Two, four, five, six. there you go but I, I just I don't know and stage 4 is just so good and like when I was yeah, stage the four most fun I ever had the most fun I ever had with Dodon Pachi was starting at stage 4 and playing four, five, six yeah. with like great, with like regular resources, stuff. right? And I think like for an intermediate player or someone, even like for a beginner, if you, I think you would learn more. Well, let me back up. I just think that you would, you would adapt better. Maybe not learn more, but adapt better if the game was a little bit harder and a little bit shorter. Like the four, five, six, but you start with like full power and three bombs, like the first life. You know, like you stretch. Like assume you made it through. Maybe like, or maybe you have the second life. Like, assume you died in stage three and you have four bomb stock. You're on your second life and no power, or maybe full power. It doesn't really matter that much. And you just played four, five, six. Like, it's the hardest parts of the game, but with that kind of resourcing, it's very fun. You know, what's hard oh, yeah. is like getting through stage three, the gauntlet of the stage three boss, which is just like, especially if you're playing shot and not laser, it's like you can't you can <laughs> sit on top, but it doesn't work. The aura doesn't work. So then you have yeah. to pay, play the whole boss fight. It takes like four hours to beat that boss. <laughs> yeah. You have to dodge forever. And then the gates try to trap you. Oh, and then you, it's just so much to deal with as a new player. And it's, it's an early wall, but stage four is just so fun. And once you get there, you're like, oh, Dodon Pachi is, is fun. Like, but you yeah. have to get through a lot. We're getting there. I don't know. Stage but three yeah, is, I, I, there's, is a 
interesting one for sure. It's really cool, actually. I, I like the cancel portion I of it. I kind of feel like stage three is like a Batsugun stage that somehow ended up in Dodonpachi. They're like, oh, <laughs> they're making Batsugun. They're like, uh, what do we do with this? Uh, you know, it's like in the leftover Batsugun design because it's just very different from the rest of the game. And it feels more like a Batsugun stage than a Dodonpachi stage. It's an... Dodonpachi is a cool game. I don't really want to play any more of it, but it's a cool game. I... I, I like, for example, I know you just played Akai Katana, like, that's way more my style of game, where it's like, you just, it's just bananas all the time. Like, you're just, you're bouncing bullets. I just got my one, one, not one all, I've, there's no second loop. So I just got my one CC in Akai yeah, Katana. Yeah, that's a fun game. It wasn't, wasn't that hard for me, anyway. Um, yeah, it's not as you, nearly as difficult as some of the other cave shmups, for a clear, yeah. because I don't of think the, it's as hard as Don Apache. Mm -hmm. I, I can't tell. I can't tell because I <laughs> yeah, played you're too, you're Pachi <laughs> five quadrillion hours. So I, I know Donanpachi so well that I actually can't tell any... I can't compare it to other games anymore because it's like, oh, Donanpachi's easy, but it's because I've played it a million hours, so I can't even tell how hard it is anymore. Yeah, it's, it's because, like, when you are in your transform mode in Akai Katana, you can safely dodge and when you get hit you won't lose anything you'll just transform back and lose all your meter but it's not the punishing punishment isn't that much so you can like enjoy being in this mishmash of bullets and just like suspiciously dodging through all kinds of like dense patterns and stuff with that shield that yes there's a consequence to dying with a shield but you know, it's kind of like um, Crimson Clover Range, right? When you have your shield, yes, you can yes. play the game mm -hmm. with with you know, you can enjoy your dodging without too much of consequences. And then when the shield goes away, then you have to kind of like, and of course, the shield means that you're in high rank mode in Crimson Clover, which means that the patterns are crazy. Like once you flip that switch to high rank in Crimson Clover Range, it, it's arcade patterns or close to it. Like you're <laughs> yeah. getting really dense stuff, but you can enjoy dodging that stuff. And I think like new players want, like they don't want to. Like, they don't want a game, like, a super easy game where it's, like, everything's easy to dodge, everything's auto-bomb. Like, Death to Knee is, like, a great mode because the patterns are the same as Arcade. Yeah, L like, yeah you Death to Knee is a great beginner fun. mode. It's amazing. Th that's I want to see more of that where it's, like, let the players play. Because, to me, bombing is a separate skill, but it per for a lot of players, it precludes dodging, right? It makes it so, well, I'm not going to learn this pattern. I'm going to bomb this pattern. It doesn't yeah, really exactly. feel that good when you're starting because you want to try. Like, you at least want to, like, play. You know, you don't want to cheese yes, so exactly, much. Or yeah. It feels like you're cheesing. Um, So, Destiny is really good at that because Destiny gets a, get, actually goes the opposite direction and gets rid of your bombs, which I think is amazing. Like, yeah. imagine Dodonpachi Destiny mode. That would be sick. Yes. I would yeah. play it. Absolutely. I, I would have enjoyed it more than my one all because did I enjoy bomb cheesing, like, 40% of the game? I don't know, probably not, but I needed to do it to get my one all, so yeah. I did it, you know? Yeah, I, exactly. That's that's why I think, like, adding arranges and stuff is so valuable for stuff like that. Totally. Because it's a new way to interact yeah. with the game. And, and I don't want to forget about this because I do want to say this, too, in terms of we're talking about, like, shmups and shmup design, stuff like that. There's got to be some way, like, I hate to use the word tutorial because tutorial just has this, like, wrong connotation to it. But there's got to yeah, be some suck. way, because they suck, because they suck. You're spot on. They there's got to be ones. some way to, like, it, it's not about teaching players the game. It's about creating a progression system. It's about creating a progression system. So you don't have to create one yourself. You know, who wants to, like, walk into you know whatever it like and and sit there and set goals for themselves and like chunk it out like i guess it's okay but i just think yeah, that zero ranger zero ranger uh, kind of solved this mostly with their continue it, system it kind of solved this yes I, but I, I think that's an elegant way to do it but i just more think, games I just think need you need to do need, it you, no. more games need to do it you, you just need like oh dude the blue revolver missions are like impossibly hard like i was like oh this is gonna teach me the game right and then like mission three is like the bullets disappear and you can never see them i was like what the f like i was like this isn't gonna teach me shit like holy shit like oh i guess i'll just have to and, and blue revolver you know is like that's a game that does it right in the sense that you you know there's a mode like this you should try out can't on um, esperade called arcade challenge is what you're thinking of there's a mode yeah, like yeah. this dude i have gold i have arcade so many challenge. gold medals in arcade challenge. challenge yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Arcade I challenge is mode. bizarre because 
it, it is good, and, and it was very addictive. I got like, so for the route that I want to beat in Esprit, which I haven't beaten yet, I, dude, Esprit's very hard for me. I don't know why that game is so hard game. for me, but it's just, it's it's just game. very hard. The, the thing that like I lose out on in Arcade Challenge mode is like the later stages where Arcade Challenge mode's really trying to get you to no miss, and I'm trying to, I have to chart out like bomb refills, more or less, and <laughs> yeah. like, like rationing of lives and like ooh I think I kind of want 400 gold bars around here because I need this like I need to get I need to refill my E energy it's like that part of the game is where my wall is right now because I'll like play naturally and my bomb refill will be in a in a spot where it's very difficult to stretch it out and it's very difficult to get my refill and so I'm playing with like half the amount of bombs as like someone who won all of the game well, I keep seeing one all. There's no, there's no second loop in Esperade, but like someone who cleared nope. the game because they, um, you know, they charted their bomb refill in an appropriate position where they could get a lot of ease back, yes, bomb again definitely. or hold bomb for a bit, and it's that's the stuff that I'm missing out of RK Challenge mode where I'm like, yeah, I could play RK Challenge Gara, but you're only allowing me one life and one bomb, so or yeah. one bomb meter, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, that's not how I'm gonna be playing Gara, so. It, I got gold medals in everything, every stage except for stage four. And then everything stage four onwards is bronze because it's like, I can't no miss stage four. Like, I don't know. Like, that <laughs> yes. boss is. Yeah. Yeah. It, that, I, I, that boss is. Um, that boss. But it is sort of, in a way, me. sort of teaching you, it's even fantastic. though you're, it's it making is. you mad because it's like, it is sort of telling you, no, it's no, good. no, no. I want you to no mm -hmm. miss this. Octane, I don't I want you to bomb spam it. I want you to no miss this. So I like it. It is kind of doing challenge. its job. It's just a little bit. It's a little bit yeah. mean when it gets later on. Yeah, I think for Esprit, I would appreciate like, you know, a, a like um like a route to follow, right? And and like and like some more, you know, some more guidance on what that might look like in a real run. Because I think yeah, like definitely. if you ap apply arcade challenge, like I think Ketsui has the same one. I think it's called um, Memories Mode or something. What's it called? Like I I Ketsui can't read it because mine's challenge. in Japanese, so I have no idea what it says. <laughs> you can't. It's, it could it's say called anything. Katakana, bitch. It's called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called Japanese whatever. I don't know what it's. Yeah, saying. I'm sorry, bro. No, it's you know, but it's it's like for a game like Ketsui or Donopachi, I think it makes a ton of sense. Because Esperade has that really weird bomb refill sort of system, it gets it gets dice it gets dicey for me because of that. Because like I can't, I, it's hard. It's been hard for me to translate Arcade Challenge into a run. Like it's been really tough for right, me to right, translate yeah. those into a run. Whereas I think like Dodonpachi, oh Dodonpachi Arcade Challenge would be pretty sick. Yes, it but would. Yeah, you're right. It's like say it's like save states, you know, and, yes, and exactly. challenges I and think all that's that kind, kind of, of stuff. Idea. Um, but even like. Yeah, I don't know. It's there's, but you're right. Like this is how you change a shmup into like a forty dollar, fifty dollar, sixty dollar game. Yes, yes ranges are good like and, and stuff like that. But I think you have to like, you gotta lead people to lead people to the value a little bit more. Like you know, get get people to understand the difference. Like me, like I see an arrange and I go. Like I need to understand why I would yes. pick, like why I would go and the play games, this game again the in games this arrange need mode. To, un, the games do need to somehow communicate the value of an arrange mode better because when I first started getting into shmups, I ignored all the arrange modes. I didn't understand what the point of them was at all. And the game the games do need to somehow communicate to that you to you in some way that because what's funny Sorry, now yeah. is that now that I'm really into shmups and I understand arrange modes. I often think like, isn't it lame that other genres don't have arrange modes? Like, you think about it, it's like, why doesn't mm -hmm. Devil May Cry have an arrange mode? Like, wouldn't that be sick? Why doesn't Ninja Gaiden have like an arrange mode where you have like different powers and shit and like you can fight the bosses and all these different modes and the scoring system changes and like, to me now I think yeah. about other genres, I'm like, why don't they have arrange modes? It's such a cool value but if you don't understand what they are, how they work, why they matter, yeah, you do you do start to see like, oh, what what's it matter if there's an arrange mode or not? Like, my biggest criticism of Esperade size that there's no arrange mode. It's like, I was like, come on, but why it, didn't you add an arrange mode, you lazy boys? <laughs> Well, well, they it's, did it's with a, that. It's that room thing, right? That yeah, was the arrangement. It's mode. the thing that we ignore. It, dude, I had this whole but conversation. I can't, I can't I, I, like, play it, though, because I can't it. read Japanese. <laughs> like, to me, there's said. no arrange mode. 
to me, yeah. Where's Fever <laughs> arranged? Where's Premium? Where's Destiny? That's what I. I was like, Esperate's a subpar port, and I'm mad that I paid seventy dollars for it, and then I forgot about Aurora's Room. And I was like, you know what? Honestly, that's on me. Like, whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's supposed to be cool. It's supposed to be cool. Like, I can see that. I can theoretically see how that. I know Jamers really loves neat. it. Jamers loves it. So I, I trust his opinion well, on this that it's good because yeah, he can read I, Japanese. I think it's got but... like. And I think it's got like remixes and stuff on things. You gotta no miss this and do this with not something yeah. or like whatever. And like, I, I think that's how you that's how you do it. I think that's how you you know you bang I O the game. You make you turn it into 150 challenge like tiny little challenges for players that you know keeps them coming, coming back. But, um, I you know, and then there's but all, this the is, other thing. This that, is an like, interesting thought though. I was I was thinking about this because this hmm. might. This might be my final, um, my final line of argument that might might sort of uh, be interesting to think about is mm-hmm. now we're 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 comparing shmups to Elden Ring, Dark Souls, high what's it called Hades, um, whatever. We're yeah. comparing Which, it all you know, to yeah. these modern genres, right? And we're pricing mm-hmm. it compared to these modern genres. But what's funny is that in the era that shmups sort of belong in it would be more like super metroid super mario world sonic 3 and like in the past could you argue like sonic 3 wasn't worth 60 dollars when it came out today we don't consider it worth 60 dollars because we don't consider older genres to be as valuable or whatever for whatever reason but isn't that interesting to think about like in the past Sonic 3 was 50 or 60 bucks. Super Mario World was this 50 is, or 60 bucks. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting to think about, but I think this is why it's clear to me that shmups have stayed in the past. Like, fighting games evolved, but, right? But, they, but, but. they continue to move forward. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, if you just throw... If you throw Garega on, like, a ROM, or just a, a ROM <laughs> of Garega on a disc and sell yeah, it for yeah, $60, right. that's absurd. But imagine yeah. this. Imagine Nintendo makes Super Mario World Ultimate Edition and they go in and they add in like different ways. They add like extra modes of Super Mario World and they add in all these Mm -hmm. bonus features and bonus content and like leaderboards for Super Mario World and like they add in all this shit (laughs) into the game. Would then you would you be convinced or would you still like ultimate ultimate Super Mario World still is not a full price game. That's a that's a forty dollar game. Yeah, it's a really solid forty dollar game, but it's a forty dollar game for sure. You know, I think yeah. like you know they're selling three D World and stuff like that at sixty, but I think one of the well, biggest right, things. Right, right. This is so what I was that can't say. be sixty. That can't be sixty then. No, right? no, but it but it can, but it can, and I'll explain why. Why? <laughs> I'll I'll tell you why because I was gonna okay, say this a moment why. ago before before you said this, and that's because shmup graphics need an overhaul. Okay. Yeah, I agree there. So let's say. It looks like Guilty Gear Strive. That what about then? You you're getting real close, man. I think absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I do agree the graphics. You, like, like, I'll, here's the get, thing, man. I 100% like, agree like, there. Yeah, the graphics. G- guilty, the graphics guilty is gear. bayonetta. You know, bayonetta tier graphics or something like that. Like yeah, I, well, it's it's not just the graphics, but it's like even think about Guilty Gear as um you know how we have um shmups or uh, soundtrack is really important albums right. People buy. I, I've bought shmup music on Bandcamp. I think touting have the music of a game music is, as a genre. Of, yeah, of games. And and we have to like make sure that gets elevated as like if you're paying twenty dollars for a game, you're also getting a, a soundtrack that's a twenty dollar basically CD but or fifteen dollars like, CD. But De- like soundtrack selection is red hot. It is so good. It's red hot. And there's like four soundtracks or something. It's like insane how much music that game comes with. You're right. It's red hot. But I think like even like guilty gear or something like that has i don't know if you get it i think i still have my cd for guilty gear accent core or whatever and it's like 23 tracks or something that's like, like it's a but lot. that's like the best it's one of the best of video game soundtracks of all time like that's right so... but, it's a, but the but the i agree with you but it's a lot of music that's the point you have to like i think you shine up the graphics right i think you add in a ton more music like for example imagine this you're gonna this is gonna blow your mind now i am ready to blow your mind i'm prepared imagine if you are you ready i don't think you're i'm ready. prepared i'm imagine holding if i need to hold on to something okay i'm ready yeah, gra- grab something grab something grab something <laughs> grab my right, check, drink. check it out i'm check. ready yeah, in case grab, i need to right, pour it right, over my head everybody get yo you're gonna have to 
<laughs> imagine, imagine in Garega if the soundtrack changed depending on which character you picked. That would be really cool. That would be How cool. How sick would it be? How sick right, would it be? Right, like, uh, you get like Gain's soundtrack and it's all like swords and shit. And I don't, what would Gain's soundtrack be? It'd be like medieval, medieval yeah. pop rock or something. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be something and it would still fit with the boss, but it would be like, but it would, it would tailor your, th now I have a reason to go play Cheetah because no one else fucking does. You know, right, like, exactly. I don't see, there's like one guy, you know, Chin Op is playing Cheetah, but everyone else is playing Golden Bat, right? Well, but Cheetah like, sucks, that's why. <laughs> Cheetah's a I shitty character. I agree with you, you know, but yeah, but if Cheetah's soundtrack was hella sick, think about it that way, then people would be like, well, yeah. I don't know. The Cheetah Cause, themes. Because why, why do people play shit characters in fighting games? It's not because they're good. No one picks I a low tier character. I can't tell you, I've never done it, so I can't tell you why people do that. I have, but it's not very fun. But I think because you connect, right? You connect with the character. There's, it's a bespoke feeling. Like you have your own soundtrack, your own stage. Like your own. Like you're just like, mm, yeah, that's true. I'm like this character. You know, like you live and you get the tat, the Zangief tattoo, and you're like, all right, cool. Like shmups, need, shmups could do that. You could change the soundtrack. You could change the way the game interacts with different characters in some more interesting ways. There's, there's so much we can do with content with shmup content that I feel like developers are leaving on the table. And I think it's because they're beholden to this arcade formula. Six stages, it has yeah. to only be six stages. This music is the same. The bosses yeah. can't change. Well, the problem, they change, the, problem the route will change the and all this other breaking shit. Breaking the six stage thing though, I agree with, with a lot of your points. The problem with that though yeah. is they're kind of doing this with beat em ups. So there's a bit of a test case we can look at. Like mm -hmm. uh, Streets of Rage 4, you know, Streets of Rage 3 oh, and all the other Streets of Rage games <laughs> are like are like 40 to 30 minutes. Streets of Rage 4 is like 2 hours and 15 minutes or something like that. And they did exactly what you're saying. They doubled the game length. They added in filler stages. No, they no, added no, they no, just no, 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 no. doubled it, it doubled it up. No. But the problem Mark, is is that solved, when you though. when you go to play okay, You don't go play ahead. every stage every time. You you right? Darius. Like this is Right, you, yeah, you provide this the content, but you don't, you don't play. Yeah, 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 exactly. So you don't you don't make the game longer. You just make the content wider. Like Operation Steel is like Darius, where you have a route, and the bosses are still RNG, and there's it's Euro. There's a shop. There's RNG mechanics. It's still a bullet hell shmup, and it's an amazing one at that. I'm I'm I think the game is quite fantastic. But I think, I you, you know, like. The problem is people are like, no, I want six stages, same exact bosses. If there's any RNG of the game, I'm leaving. But I think that's the very, very small minority. And I think most people would appreciate 10 to 15 stages and you pick five. Or there's a route like Darius, right? Like expand the content, but don't change the length. I'm with you on the length. Fuck the length, dude. I, you can't make shmups more than like, honestly, 20 minutes. <laughs> like 25 minutes is a yeah, lot for me. That's a like, lot of shmups. Like, that's a lot of shmups. That's a lot of shmupping. But <laughs> why not? Why? Imagine like, imagine Dodonpachi so with like, the Darius formula. So it's a 15 minute it's game. It's like in a range, but rather than having different properties, patterns, and all that shit, it's just straight up like new levels. So it's like, Mm -hmm. So like Mushihimi Sama, you have like original mode, then you have like the Chinese forest mode, or now you're like in a whole different <laughs> setting, whole different stages, yeah. uh, different bugs. But then, Fuck then yeah. it kind of becomes the question: Why don't you just make a different, a new game at that point? Like, why don't make you just make no. two shmups then? It is that two shmups. That's it. the point. No, 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 but it is two shmups, right? That's the point of, like, a Dark Souls or, like, a more $60 game is that it is multiple games in one, depending on how you choose to play it. Like, if you choose to play as a mage or you choose to play... But the point is, like, if you think about the Darius map, right? Like, the, you know, the, like, five-stage map, like, the fully-fledged one, which has, like... like, G, like or, or G Darius, which has two, two routes per stage, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's, like... It's a smaller map, but it's two routes per stage, and then the bosses change, like, their patterns and behaviors change. And then you can capture different Pokemon along the way, which is a whole other thing, which whatever. But like, that's like more variability. I think the people who lose out are Moglars and um, and Juju Kenobis who really want to like sharpen up a very static or close to static video game. In terms of when I say static, I'm, I've, of course I don't mean like memo static, but I mean like you know the game is here and I want to I want to like 
I want to sharpen this one knife consistent, to the finest, consistent to the finest of game. edges. To, it's like it's, it's a diamond edge knife. But for everyone else, they're going to sharpen it to a point, and they're going to say, I, I don't want to sharpen this anymore. Like, this knife is plenty sharp for me, right? And so I think the way you fix that is you do like Darai. I mean, imagine Dodonpachi with a Darius map. You have 15 bosses or something, or 20 bosses. They're different. You have to make some choices. But wouldn't you go back and play it again and try a different boss or try a different route and try to like fuck around and stuff? Now Good you have question. 10 games, I actually 15 don't know. games. <laughs> well, I would love to answer, ask, have you answer that because you're, I think, a more of a purist on the bullet hell formula and I wanted to, I, I want to see games like when switch I, and For example, it, when right? I play Darius, for example, I, yeah, find the optim I find the optimal route and I play it every time. <laughs> I play the, exactly. the optimal route, basically, and I just play it every yeah. single time. I don't really go and, oh, what's on this You don't want to see what's the other bosses? Stage? Not really, no. <laughs> yeah, see, so I think we're just fundamentally different players looking for different things, but here's yes. the beauty. I can play Darius and explore and never do a 1cc, and you can play Darius and with your optimal route and score, and we both get to be happy. Yeah, no, I think that's very but true. It, I think but that's if it's very Pachi, only just, you just, get to be happy. I don't get to be happy but the, <laughs> because I'm bored. But the uh, part of it that gets interesting, though, is like on the developer side, because basically mm -hmm. that's... Uh, they're already like putting together and this might just be the real truth of it you know whether or not it's fair whether or not it's fine it doesn't matter it's is that maybe the truth of it is that in order to move a shmup to a wider audience you need to jam pack that shit with basically three shmups you need to put like three shmups in there absolutely <laughs> worth of content yeah. in order to to move it yeah dog Which, and Why that not? might be the reality of it that might be the reality like like g darius I would almost pay 60 for that if it was because it, it only has um, three panels and then two routes each. So it's it's a lot of content, actually. And and there's like a Pokedex and you can like capture all the fucking Pokemon and do it because, you know, every little creature you capture is a whole new shot type. And some of them have shields and some of them yeah. are shooting in yeah. rolling gun formations and some of them are going to, and they all turn to bombs and alpha beams. It's fantastic. If you put if you put that with like modern day graphics like it looked like call not call of duty it's a terrible example but it looked very sh very nice like very mm -hmm. shiny Gu guilty gear is perfect example i love your example yes. it looked like it looked like zerd and you added w just one more tier of bosses so like just a little bit more content but kept that formula the same that's a 60 dollars game for sure because it would take people a long time to explore and find all the little secrets in the stages and you hide things here and there little things you know and everyone has their own favorite shot type to pull out of different you know, creatures and mm. the graphics are amazing and you know you can have your route where you're really like leaderboarding and you're like a, B, C, F, these are the routes I want to pick. I don't give a fuck about these other bosses they're asked to me. And I can just like play it and enjoy the 27 different bosses or whatever. Um, right. I, I don't know, but I'm what I'm describing is Operation Steel, by the way. For those at home watching, listening, oh. <laughs> go check out Operation Steel. I'm not doing it on purpose. It just happened to be that way, but like- Yeah, I haven't Operation played Operation Steel is an R it's an RNG-based bullet hell shmup that was developed by one person that has a lot of, I mean, it's, dense patterns all that kind of stuff it has rng and a shop and weapons and power levels and all this kind of stuff you never lose power levels for dying so you don't have to worry about that there are bombs and you can refill them and there's a bunch of stuff that people aren't going to like right they're gonna be like oh rng i wanted this weapon but i never got it in this playthrough fine you know it's more roguelite than it is mm. true arcade shmup but conceptually you could take all that shop shit away and just make it dodonpachi or make it whatever you want to make it I still think the concept of like, I want to go play that game tomorrow or soon because I haven't seen half the bosses in the game. And there's like achievements for, you know, beating every boss and there's achievements for visiting every area and all that kind of stuff in the, in the, on the map. Mm. Right. Um, and I don't know, like as a casual or as a person who's semi-casual, it's that key, that's going to be a stronger draw. That's going to be a stronger draw to me than while you're 172nd on the leaderboard, I want to make 100 or I want to make 150. It's like, I really have to soul search to get to that point. And it's like, what if the, everyone above me is like a Japanese god? Like, am I even going to be able to do it? Like, I right. have no idea, you know? Yeah. It's like, ugh, it's scary to think about trying to be good at something. Like, who wants, you know, that's like a, it's a very like, you have to be very competitive to really want to be that good at something. Right, But yeah. I think to just explore it and, you know, fuck around, try to find new shit. I think, you know, but anyways, but I'm on my soapbox. You can clearly tell that I'm very passionate about this particular thing, which I think that 
I think that there can still be arcade shmups at like a, to me, like a $40, $40 price point. But and then I think like ones with more content or more stuff to do other than scoring and things like that, I think maybe deser- what about can deserve like a, a higher price point. So what about like a Darius? So this one will be the really interesting test. Ooh, so what me. about like a Darius Cosmic collection? Because that is literally like how many shmups? It's like seven mm-hmm. shmups or some shit. Um, mm-hmm. And it has like really, it's really well done. So it's not like ROMs on a ROM, like a Psycho collection where it's a bunch of garbage. Like it's a really well done collection as far as technical, uh, it has save states. It's not as thorough as an M2 one, but it's much more rich on the content size because it's a shitload of games. So would that be a $60 game to you? Yeah, of course. I think Alesta Collection is a $60 game. I think the Cosmic Collections are $60 games. I, but I think, again, Mark, it comes down to, like, you're paying for a piece of history. You're paying for perfect emulation. You're paying for, like, good training features. Like, you're, like, mm-hmm. you want to get in on some of this. Like, you want to, like, you want to, like, preserve a piece of history. Like, it's a collection, you know, because you feel like, your dollars going towards like almost like a museum type initiative that's trying to preserve right. old games and bring them there, to for people. Sure. There, yeah. There's like yeah, you're like a part of a a movement when you're doing that. If I'm paying whatever sixty dollars for Soul Crest, I'm not part of shit. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I ain't Soul Crest is price. We can all agree was out of hand. Even it's I a, would we, say it's that. It's a weird. It's a weird one. Forty to fit forty two fifty, but fifty dollars has like the full game with extra voice mm. di- voice dialogue and all that kind of stuff. And forty dollars is the base game was also like a weird choice. It's like we think this is ten dollars extra content, um, but it's not gameplay con. It's not really gameplay content. It's yeah, like, that you don't DLC get an is you straight don't get, garbage. Like, that DLC it may it actively makes the game worse. <laughs> so you like pay ten dollars <laughs> to have a shittier game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would suck. That would really suck if you got that version. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I absolutely collections are worth. I mean, the the better the collection, the more the cash it's worth. Um, right. Yeah. And 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 again, like I paid sixty whatever bucks for Esperate Psy, and I I don't like regret my decision or anything like that. But it's just like I'm having a lot of trouble clearing Esperate. Well, and I've yeah, done it, it is interesting. All of the because... gold challenges, and I don't know where to go really. Right. And it is interesting because, like, depending on your temperament. It is somewhat subjective, but it's also there's like a reality to it where, for instance, I'm a person who gets who gets buyer's regret on things for video games these days, like very heavily because <laughs> I'm so tight with my budget. Oh, I hate and this And there's game, so much yeah. shit I have to buy anyway, even for uh-huh. like the channel. So for instance, I bought Death Smiles uh, for the Switch for my review, or was it for PS4? No, it was on PS4 for my review. And I bought it because I had to review it. <laughs> like, that's why I bought it. But I regret that purchase, that $40 PS4 mm-hmm. Death Smiles purchase. Because the one plus two? The t- a plus two, the, yeah, the because I don't like more recent two. one, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. like two. Uh, it doesn't work as well <laughs> as the Steam version, as far as input lag and everything. And then just the 360 yeah. version is just straight up better. And then the DLC, I didn't think was that good. So I ended up you know feeling like okay i that one i felt pretty burned on but you know that's because i didn't like this miles too and that's because but i didn't like what, the uh, dlc characters and that's right. because i already own it on the 360 so there's like three factors there that other people might not have yeah well no but no then i think i'm feeling really i'm though. feeling major buyer's regret talking about elden ring <laughs> For goddamn Elden Ring on the PC because I've been playing the damn thing in 30 frames a second and I can't oh get good quality footage oh no. of it and I, oh no. I I tried to refund it to Steam like three times and I kept writing like appeals on why they should refund it and they're like oh you've no. played over two hours we're not going to refund it where you've played over two so I couldn't couldn't get the refund because I wanted to refund it and get it on the Xbox One what? X and play it on that <laughs> but goddamn it yeah but you- now I have this busted ass Steam version it's driving me crazy. Mm-hmm. But you made a really interesting point there, and I think the point that came across to me is I've bought shmups. So shmups are like fighting games in that you can look at screenshots and you can watch videos, but until you get your hands on and play the game, you're not going to know if you like it. You might hate yes. it. Yeah. Like, it's so difficult. Like I, mm. I, And the shmups that I buy on Switch in particular are my most regretful ones because you, I can't refund them or do anything yes. about it. So yeah. if I buy a shmup, like for example, I bought Rolling Gunner. I know a lot of people like Rolling Gunner. Oh, and everybody who knows bummer, me, bummer. everybody, you didn't like Rolling Gunner. Everybody knows me. Oh, I, 
I, I know I don't like Rolling Thunder, but I, everyone who knows me knows this, so they're all laughing right now because they know that this is my like my <laughs> pet peeve. <laughs> this is because this I, is like because your I, custard's last stand in Schmup. This is my last <laughs> like stand. Rolling no, Gunner. and I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to rail on Rolling Gunner, but the point is that I paid twenty dollars for it, and I didn't. I don't. And you know, Mark, I was playing like. Psychoports and like cave games and stuff for like a reasonable the same amount like Crimson Clover and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And when I got Rolling Gunner, I was like, like these gra these graphics are like, the graphics the are shit. Is, uh, yeah, like, there's no like, there's no just, if or there was, ends about that. The graphics blow. Big it was time. just like a quality thing, right? It was like the gameplay might be amazing, but yeah, it was the like is good. the way like like the like even just like the. The, the way the bullets kind of anime there was just no I felt no soul like there was like it was like very sterile very 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 sterile very paper paper cutter to me but the problem was literal paper the, cutter because some of those sprites are like JPEGs <laughs> like flying two, JPEGs, fr two frame sprites yes <laughs> yeah, yeah. look you know whatever you want to say I mean it, it, some people think Battle Traverse looks like shit and I think it looks fucking amazing like I think Battle Traverse yeah. is a beautiful sprite sprite that, art isn't game. that I funny because I crunch. agree like I don't like Rolling Gunner's graphics but I like Battle Traverse's and yet they're so similar and yet Battle Traverse has that has that touch that makes it's it fun it's got the touch and, and there's reason. sound design like there's you know Rizardi mentioned something that I found was very interesting and he noticed that I didn't notice it it's like when you sink the boat in Battle Traverse you can hear it make a thud on the ocean floor like you hear the bass like boom yeah. like hit and it's just like de details some fun shit and and I think like that is a great whether game you, whether you like Rolling Gunner or not, and it's not like the point. That's like a $10 point game or something like that, right? Battle Traverse. Oh, which one? Oh, Battle Traverse? That insanely underpriced to me. But And, and by the way, do you know that game has like a TLB hard mode, multiple hard modes and multiple yeah. loops and shit? Like, yeah. like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy also how much great, shit's in that game. Great normal difficulty in that game. Very good intermediate game. I was able to clear it pretty pretty handily. But the, the point is, though, not if you like or hate Rolling Gunner or like Battle Traverse or hate Battle Traverse. I bought it. Now I have a twenty dollar paperweight, right? Just like you have a twenty dollar paperweight with Jet Smiles One Plus Two. I'm just gonna say twenty dollars. Forty dollar. Half of it. Yeah, I know it's forty dollars, <laughs> but like half of it is you're never gonna play. Like Jet Smiles yeah, Two, you didn't I have don't. before, right? To my knowledge, you didn't have. A I had copy it on the three sixty, but oh, I'm I sorry. I thought you. I didn't think you had. Okay, so you already had a copy of that. Assuming you didn't, it would. I mean, your cop your your copy of Death Smiles Two then is a paperweight. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's a frisbee. I could throw it, you know, dogs you can play catch with it. You could throw it, it's like, man, <laughs> I, I, that dude, game. Dog, I don't I, like it I, at all. I wish I had Rolling Gunner as a frisbee, because then I could throw it, but I got a digital <laughs> version, man, and I can't refund it, and I can't sell it. I want to sell it so bad. But, it, you know, it's not about whether you like or dislike the game, it's that shmups like fighting games. If you don't like the game, there's really nothing for you. There's nothing you can do. You can't. Well, back in the you, day, you, you could just, resell like, it on it eBay out. for a, a shitload of money, well, but that's you can't not what do I that. Mean. I mean, like to get <laughs> to get something out of the game, you know, it's like yeah, yeah, you yeah. could credit feed it, I guess. But it's it's like you know, it's it's like with a fighting game, at least you can be like, well, I'm gonna go watch everyone's, I'm gonna go like play everyone through an arcade mode once on the shitty on the shitty I, very easy. I difficulty. definitely know what you're saying here because I. Okay, so what happened is I went to my local. Shout outs to because members of my local now listen to the podcast, so I can't talk too much smack on them <laughs> because they listen to the show. <laughs> but uh, okay, Look, we're, but I went it's to a safe space here, guys. I went you want to my, hear the truth? You can't. Handle yeah, you want to hear the truth? You can't handle the truth. So I went to my local, and they they were everyone was like, "We're playing Melty Blood Type Lumina. We're playing Melty Blood Type Lumina. This is the we're game." We're doing it. And, and you know, and there's that real launch hype around the game, and everyone's like, "Oh, this is the game. This is Melty Blood's coming out. Like Melty Blood's finally hitting yeah. the mainstream. It's going to be appreciated." I was like, "Yeah, let's do this." I bought Melty Blood. Literally the next week or the week after that, I went there. No, we're not playing Melty Blood anymore. Well, you know, forget Game's that ass. shit. And then, and then you look on the <laughs> Steam like uh, player base, and it's like 12 people play Melty Blood now. And so I feel like. I got ripped off. I'm like, I paid 40 mm -hmm. bucks for this goddamn game, and now I'm never going to play it, and I probably could buy it now, I don't know, at some point for like $10 down the line. So yeah, I definitely know what you mean. Like, you can I get- I just don't know what to do Same thing with that, Soul though. Calibur 6. Paid full price for that bitch, and 60 again, bucks, no baby. one- no one played it. Either my friends who said they were going to play just it, me. they just didn't. Just me and you for a week. Yeah, and I was like, fuck. And then it's you're really trying to play week. Netplay, the Netplay. The net play was like busted and shitty. Uh, got yeah, burned on that one wet. bad too. Net, net play got a little bit better in Soul Calibur, but it was very bad for about a it month. It was, I, it was so bad thing, that man. I played. Uh, you know what's that thing? 
that you play on the the computer that people Remote use play? for net that play for net oh, they use oh, for net oh, play. Oh, you're talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know what you're talking what about. What the hell that thing called? Or Parsec. Uh, Parsec. Parsec. It was so bad. I was literally matchmaking with people using Parsec because it had better better net play than oh, the God. actual in-game net play of Soul Calibur mm, Six. It was bad. Mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but and and net net plays is obviously thank God we don't have to deal with that in shmups. But it, it is it is something, right? It is a it is a point that it's like no matter how many arranges you have and stuff, it's like it's hard it's hard to know if a game's gonna really hook you mm-hmm. for the line and sinker, you know, off the bat. Yeah. Um, I wonder if like that's like you do. What do you do? Do you do demos? Like, how do you solve that? But I think demos is a now. great idea. I think demos yeah, is a great idea. Yeah, maybe it's demos. I, I, I just, I've, yeah. I've definitely, like, Shikondo. I hate Shikondo. I think the game's Me trash. Me too. I, I bought that I game that week rolling... one. I got burned so on that mad. one, too. I pay, like... I think that game's trash. 20 bucks or something for it? And week yeah. one, Shikondo. You think you have it bad? Week one, Shikondo no, you have was worse. <laughs> hella busted. The um, You can have like, this one. <laughs> the, the control config didn't work well at all like i couldn't get the control config to recognize like mm-hmm. two buttons on my stick or it was like the input of my arcade stick well, it wouldn't these, recognize these sound like bugs like you no no no. But you also hold didn't on. like the game right okay i didn't like the game <laughs> but hold on we're not getting past the bugs yet because <laughs> i got it on switch Welcome and to it Chicago didn't power hour it didn't scale correctly i bought it on steam and switch so i had bugs on the steam version so i got this the switch version to be like okay i'm sure the console version won't have all these input bugs right so i got the console version and the console version of shikondo at first on switch didn't scale the stage correctly and instead it was like the bullets were like the size of like uh periods or commas they're tiny even if you played on like a monitor even if you plugged it into your dock and played it on a monitor it didn't scale the stages correctly so that the bullets were all super tiny and it was so busted yeah and the game itself is not good yeah so i i got double burned on that goddamn game no i also have mark and because i'm an i'm a moron because that's the thing you get into shmups and you start buying everything because i'm because i'm a complete (laughs) idiot i have gunbird one gunbird two and Dragon Blaze for both Switch and Steam. Me too. Me too. And well, I have them on Switch. I don't have them like, on Steam. But I bought them well, on I Switch them on twice. St- <laughs> oh, nice. That's even better. But you I, got the I had to do. I had to do that for. Uh, well, I guess I didn't buy them though. Nintendo Life bought them, so I guess never mind. There you go. There you go. Get that Nintendo <laughs> Life money. How do I get that, dog? No, I don't really want that. Um, <laughs> no, but like I have. I bought them on Steam because everyone said the input lag was better on Steam. But I was playing Dragon Blaze on Steam the other day, and I was like. This is unplayable without save state, so basically yes. I have to play out on MAME. Also, it yeah. felt e- it felt even that little tiny bit snappier even on MAME too. Like it there did. was something with the Steam port of Dragon Blaze that, as the port ran, it would go through these cycles where it would get like frame choppy for like a stage. Probably it, like it's a not, memory leak or something. It wasn't like a specific stage. It was some kind of weird memory leak, but it would like resolve itself. Because I was playing the game for about an hour, hour and a half streaming it, and it that never happened with MAME, and it's just like. I don't regret buying something and then playing it on MAME. I did that with uh, Ride and Fi- like I got the Ride and Legacy Steam collection. Yeah. It's trash. It's yeah. seriously bad. Yeah, but I yeah. got it, and then I'm playing it on MAME, but I feel better because I'm like, okay, like it's fine. Like Cebu, I got, I got Kaihatsu probably got like a dollar from this, so like whatever. Like legitimize my ROMs, you know, which is like a weird thing to say, but th- no, I've done yeah, that too. That's I do, I've done that too with Metal Slugs. I bought all the. F- arcade archives metal slugs i never play them on arcade archives on but i own them yeah. on arcade archives just so i can be like feel a little bit less guilty when Look. i'm playing them on a main Look, or on dude. a shmup arch or playing them on mister <laughs> you know like i bought them yes. i bought them for you know whatever it was 10 bucks a piece or whatever it is yeah so i, I just don't know how you solve that piece of it because i think like then what happens is you just get the like people who buy Garega for $60, like you said, you know, you, you nailed it before when you said there was that two sides of the coin. If you get Garega for $60 and you're able to refund it and you and you start playing it and you're like, oh boy, you're like, I can't, the ship is too big or like this this game is too hard or like I don't understand how the meddling works and I'm just like, I, I, I can't, I can't, you know. Um, you, 
for sixty dollars you don't keep you can't keep it around you got to figure out how to refund that sell it do something but for like 20 30 bucks you'll probably keep it and come back to it later because you maybe like down the road as you become a better player or you get more curious yeah maybe one day i'm gonna crack open dragon blaze and be like you know what today's the fucking day um, yeah, yeah yeah this game's going yeah, you're down you're just like you're the psycho master a few years now and you're like oh no yeah. problem oh, i don't need save states yeah. for this shit <laughs> fuck this um yeah i see a lot of people playing strikers but it's so i don't know it's it's a it's a tough one because it is just like the barriers are so high and the games are so difficult and 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 i mean the psycho games have really nice monkey and child modes but i mean the name the nomenclature of that it's like (laughs) you are not helping yourself at all yeah (laughs) i I got my monkey i did i I put my dragon all my dragon blaze monkey uh monkey one all with all technical shots um up on youtube as like a lesson like (laughs) you know i was like um, but anyways, I, I do have to I do have to run Mark, but because um, it's it's late here in the uh, in the old Shy Town area. But it was it was amazing chatting with you. I don't know if you had any other kind of last minute topics here. But yes, I want I want to sneak in a few last hot quick minute topics that you can weigh in do on it. real quick. Okay, go for so it. So what do you think of these mini consoles like the Exa coming? Not the Exa, sorry, the Egret <laughs> mini arcade machine. I think there was a Astro mini arcade machine. Do these appeal to you at all? Um, I have a, I have a lot of mini con. I I mostly have the ones that are TV connectable, but I do have like the tiny little Neo Geo one. And the reason mm-hmm. I bought it was to legitimize my 30 Neo Geo ROMs. Look at that one, yeah, 100 bucks legitimized 40 ROMs. Um, no, I, so here's what I think. I'm not interested in them, but I think we should be very careful because I think what we need to do is apply. Like we need to let the casual folks enjoy these things without ripping them apart for their input lag issues for their competitive play issues they're not meant as competitive play machines like that's not what they were designed to do in my opinion like i think like you're not it's going to be six frames of lag seven frames of lag you're not going to compete but i don't think that the normal person wants to compete i think they just want to credit feed and enjoy these games maybe on their desk maybe on their tv and I think we have to be, if we want the genre to like get more exciting and interesting and all that kind of stuff, we have to say like, yeah, enjoy your mini console. I mean, I, you're probably yeah, that's not going to chew all Gunbird on it. You know what's funny like, is I've never actually reviewed any of them for that reason, because I knew if I reviewed me. them, I'd have to destroy them. So I actually, as funny as it seems, I've actually never criticized these in my YouTube channel because I've never, because I never touched them because I knew if I did, I'd have to destroy them. But yeah, to me, I actually it's agreed. Like, That's why I don't review them on my channel. Yeah. I just pre- pretend like, I don't know. I think it's different yeah, with a port, but with like, yeah, with these mini yeah. machines, they are more novelty. They are more just like an introductory type thing. But if you're like a hardcore player, it's probably a, a bit of a waste of your money. But, you know, like I, slamming them on my channel is probably a bit going too far. So that's why I don't ever actually yeah. mention them on the channel too much. Yeah, I think it's like, you know criticizing a toy ferrari and being like this is not a real ferrari it's like yes we know we we all know <laughs> there's not a jlf there's not a son with jlf in there um and it's an android base and all that kind of stuff so i i think like if we want the genre to like get exciting and grow you'll like encourage people who are not so interested in being competitive to buy these things and maybe one day they will get competitive and they'll say because that's what happens man you 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 get the mini console you start playing some you start playing strikers on it you start liking the game and you're like i'm hitting a wall here where i can't use this tiny ass piece of shit joystick and then you go buy a jlf <laughs> yeah. and then you go buy strikers on yeah. pc and now you're suddenly talking to us on discord it doesn't happen yeah. the other way where it's like well no now i'm not, like you know if you want the if you want the stuff to grow i think you'll do the i think you'll encourage them for it, certain it, people it's like it's and like never just, underestimate sure the power of a really good gimmick you know what i mean it's like never as fun as it is to disregard it, sometimes a really good hook and a really good gimmick does actually bring people in. And I think these kind of mini arcade machines are kind of like that. They're like a really nifty little gimmick for people to get introduced to games they would never touch otherwise. Yeah, I mean, it's like, did you did you buy a twelve thousand or you know a two thousand dollar Les Paul as your first guitar? Probably not. You bought one that probably didn't even stay in tune. But if you liked it you ended up getting a nice guitar later on when you realized that it was shit, right? It's that yes. it's the same concept to me. Let people have their shitty things so that they can get the good stuff down the road if they like it. And if they don't like it, you know, probably good because if then all they would do is buy the most more expensive thing and then rail on it and say that it's not very good. Hmm, very true. Like Second Gorega topic. for sixty dollars. 
Yeah. Hey, run through. Get, my wife get out of there. Kill me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're, 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 you're lucky. This is the end of the podcast. Okay. Oh, she, uh, she's gonna she's gonna uh, shoot me in a minute. I'm, you're gonna be no more octane. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I'll I'll get no, the last go, topic go, 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 real rap, quick. I want you to fire. talk about <laughs> the kumites you guys do on Junkies Discord because oh, they're yeah. super cool, and I want people to know a bit more about them. One Thank final you. plug. Absolutely, and I appreciate the plug. Um, we do them either on my channel, that's twitch.tv slash octane, A-K-T-A-N-E, or on uh, Rizzardi or Chinop's channel. Um, we just did one today for two different games. Nebulous Ray, have you heard of this game? No. <laughs> Probably not. not. At all. I didn't think so. What about Strato Fighter? That sounds familiar, but I don't think I've played it. Okay. One's a Tecmo game, and one's a Namco game. So it was like, not oh, Taito. Yeah. Not, I love these, not love Psycho, those studios. not IRM, you know, anyways. But the point of these events to me is that I think the biggest thing missing, missing, missing in shmup content that I saw was that a good player or a pro player picking up a game for the first time, what do they do for real? Not like, what are they going to... The backwards, look, when you look back on, after you've won all of Pachi and you look back on it, it's a very different experience than when you're going through it the first day and you're getting uh -huh. killed by the stage two boss over and Absolutely. over again. We don't, get to, we don't get to see that. You don't see that. You see Jamers' final score. You see Mark MSX's one alls. Like, yes, occasionally you may catch a stream. Unless you turn so into my it, streams and watch me be beat down yes, in the stream. But other than that. You will catch a stream. But the blind Kumite is our streams where what we do is we take multiple players, you know, good players or even even novices, whatever. It, it, it evens the playing field when you do it this way. We pick a game, you get one credit and you can restart as many times as you want. But you're just you got to stop when you hit when you lose that credit and just like restart from the beginning. And it's a race to see how far people can get on 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 one credit during like an hour for a restart timer and so two players are playing or three and they play at once they're they're competing but it's like camaraderie right they're also like oh wait what'd you do with that boss oh wait you're this right, is yeah. spot? wait is is blue shot good is green shot good and there's a lot of like and there's misinformation and there's we try to help them with when we know about a game like if there's someone i know i'll bring someone on like i, I had shmup junkie on for a couple of them and he was explaining the games oh but that's fun it's just a it's a fun way to even the playing field and just play for fun. There's still always a winner because someone always got further than the other one on one credit. And sometimes it can be like, but most of the time you'd be surprised. The skill difference gets really narrow when you limit, it's a brand new game no one knows and you limit the time you have with it. And it really shows yeah. the thought process of new players and how they break certain things down they've never seen before, right? And it shows all the pain and suffering that comes with like the first hour of a game. So people can look at it and go, oh, it's not just me. Like you don't become jamers in the first hour and just clear the game. And it's not just like super easy. You hit a wall, you hit many walls. And you have to navigate those. And the natural course of that is very hard to find on the internet. I think that's what's missing. And it encourages players to see an amazing player just get destroyed by an IREM game in the first 10 minutes because then they're like, oh, that's not that yes, different from me. That's me. That's me. That's so, me playing anyways, IREM, that, getting absolutely that's slapped. That's my plug. Yes. And yes, we're going to get you, you in on one a, of these. So you're watching these. Yeah, I'll definitely join one. Just let me know when and where. Um, yes, sir. Do you have... Are you doing these only on Twitch? Do you have a YouTube channel? I do. I have a YouTube channel. We can link it in the description with a playlist. I upload all of them onto a playlist. We did the yes, 50th awesome. one today, so it's actually the 50th anniversary as of probably not when you guys hear this because it's it'll be a couple days later. But yes. as of this <laughs> podcast, let's call it, it was the 50th one we did. Um, and the first one we did was Tiger Heli and Twin Cobra. But I, I'll link, we'll link the playlist if you guys want to check them out. But it, you know. Yes, it's, definitely. Because that sounds like a fun, a fun, not only fun to take part in, but it'd be fun to tune in to like the VODs and see, see Especially what you all did. <laughs> today's was mind blowing, Mark. You would, I, everybody should watch Nebulous Ray. We'll, I'll, we'll link it. Um, Definitely. Well, thanks so much, my dude. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, uh, you know, pushing the time that you have uh, to the limits. It's okay. Uh, uh, it's been a really fun conversation and it's been really fun getting your perspective on the pricing because I myself like I think you're more accurate in your assessments of the pricing because I've heard like when you look through the YouTube comments on my reviews like these are these are very similar opinions a lot of people feel like 
I'm not dropping 60 bucks on this bitch, you know, I'm, I'll drop like 40 <laughs> or 30 or 20 and that seems to be the, the price range that people do prefer. And so it, it is interesting to sort of pick your brain on what the genre could do to kind of push up the value in people's eyes. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. And again, uh, shout outs to you and Shmup Junkie. That's the reason why. That's Those are the real reasons why I'm here is Zero Ranger, Crimson Clover, Blue Revolver, you and Shmup Junkie. So shout awesome out to, stuff. to both of you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Adios. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Anthony Iodice, Aaron Solis, Asa Davis, Ben, Borgie22, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Stasleya, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Hausu, Kiwi, JLab, JBRPG, Jim Knockham, Joe Angelo, John Kelly, Jolts, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, KikoMan589, Larage, Malaise, Mark Toms, Maz, Megadeth859, Minong, Mechelin, Mitchell Y, Queen Charlene, Nathan Daniel Davis and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Oakla Kugels, Philip Mason, Portal 63, Radocat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf 015, Scanline City, Seesaw STG, Seven Overdose, Shane Sintensky, Schmup Junkie, SLW, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Dirty Screech, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Plasmo, Twilight EX, Utakaya. Thanks so much. <laughs>